You already know this is Pawn Drunk Boxing, aka Mr. Moo Shine himself. What's up, y'all? What's good? What's good? Hot Monday. What a hot Monday. Shite. Yikes. A little bit of water. Let me get a little water. What's good, Lisa? What's good, Johnny? What's good? Ah, let the people come trickle down because it's going to be a little touchy subject here tonight. Man. Shout out to all the boxers out there, all the fighters out there, my modern-day warriors, modern-day gladiators. They put their life on the line for a pure entertainment. It was good talk. It was good boxing talk. <sighs> um, Gary Russell Jr. had a recent interview with um, uh, um, Barbershop Conversation. Now, you know how I feel about those channels, but there's people asking me, but how do you know Punch about the, how about, how you know about Gary Russell Jr. in the interview if you don't like these channels, Punch? Why? First and foremost, I got a boxing channel. I cover boxing. It would be a disservice to me and a disservice to y'all that I don't Tune in to these type of interviews, regardless of who's the host, regardless of who's the network. Look, I don't like CNN, but hey, if there if there's an interview, if, if, if I don't like CNN, but if, if somebody's interviewing uh, Floyd Mayweather or Manny Pacquiao, I'm going to watch. If they're going to interview Mike Tyson, I'm going to watch, regardless how I feel about CNN. So... There it goes. There's my explanation for the people that be like, oh, but yo, punch, you be talking about these type of channels and blah, blah, blah. Y'all already know what I said about certain type of channels. Y'all know, y'all already know what time, what type of time it is with punch drunk. I don't like the race baiting, but you know what? I am going to feed to the animal right now and I'm going to have these conversations. Y'all read the title. Yo, what's good? What's good, JT? GT, my fault. So, in a conversation, Gary Russell Jr. was explaining himself that he want to fight um, Devin Haney. And I've explained enough in the channel that Gary Russell Jr., first and foremost, I got a lot of respect for Gary Russell Jr. I said it once before. I said it a long time ago. And for the people that just got to know me, I always I always said back in the day that's th that Gary Russell Jr., Demetrius Andre, the, um, Keith Thurman, Deontay Wilder, Mikey Garcia, Bud Crawford, was going to be around this time, pound for pound top fighters. I did that prediction a long time ago, way before I even had this boxing channel, way before I was even into this YouTube thing, when I was just strictly into the boxing stuff and not caring about what people feel about my feelings. Put it that way. <laughs> Alejandro's good. It's the most proved between the two Charlo brother on the pay-per-view doubleheader. We're going to get to that too. I think, um, Jam uh, who? Prove between who has the most to prove. Jamal Charlo. Jamal Charlo. Jamal Charlo, he's been, I like his resume. I think he got an underrated resume. I don't think he got a lot of respect. Well, a lot of, he don't get his just due with the type of resume and the guy that he's fighting. If you look at his past four or five fights, Jamal Charlo is fighting, is fighting the fight. He's fighting challenging, challenging opponents. Now, <sighs> now that's a good fight. Gary Russell Jr. versus Devin Haney. Right, I mean, who else Devin Haney got to fight right now? That's gonna give him some type of credit, but uh, not credit because, of course, every person that steps inside the ring gets all the credit in the world, regardless you rank number one to rank number ten thousand. You get credit, you get all the, you know, in my for me, you get all the credit to step inside that ring because it takes a lot of balls, it takes a lot of statistics and fortitude to step inside that ring. Gary Russell Jr to me, has been probably the most avoided fighter in this era. There's going to be people that's going to be that be like, oh, well, that's up to Gary Russell Jr. That's his fault. He probably overpricing himself. And talking about overpricing himself and also talking about ducking because, of course, 
Gary Russell Jr. was trying to say that Devin Haney is ducking. He was trying to say that Devin Haney is ducking, that Leo Santa Cruz is ducking, that Javante Tang Davis is ducking, that for May with a for um, May with a promotion is ducking. Everybody is ducking him. That's what he's trying to say. That that Lumachenko is ducking him for the rematch. Everybody is ducking Gary Russell Jr. That's what he's saying. In my opinion, I believe this one, he's one of the most avoided fighters of this era, including with Boo Boo Andre that got everybody in the 160 pounds running to the 168 pounds. That's something regardless if you're a fan or not. If you're a fan of boxing, we see something. We see two champions that can't get a proper fight because of this notion of low risk, high reward. Or high risk, low reward. Matter of fact, my fault. <laughs> so. <sighs> punch, I I got, I, and, and during the interview, I ain't see the whole interview, but I got little snippets of it. Did the fight get green lit? <clears throat> which one? The, uh, um, Loma and, and, and um, wait, what's good, Johnny? What's good? Which one? The, the Loma and, uh, oh, oh, oh you're talking about the Devin Haney and the Gary Russell Jr. Not yet. Bill Haney. They was chopping it up. In my opinion, I did a video earlier and I said, you know what? If a man, if another man is calling you out, if if Gary Russell Jr. is calling Devin Haney out, now I understand that Bill Haney is his, is his father, his daddy, his manager. He speaks for him, of course. You already know in the sport of boxing, man. These fathers, man, it, it, it's like they're in in it in the fight as well. That's their son. You know, you, you're going to step up for your kid and things of that nature. But at the end of the day, Devin Haney is a world champion, right? Regardless of how he got it, he's a world champion. Regardless of how he got it. Regardless how you and I feel, yeah, uh, he's a champion. But he's got, he got the green belt, right? Anyway. Anyway. It is what it is. What's good, Los? It is what it is. So, I would like Devin Haney to actually, while he was do, while he was talking in that interview, not to actually, all right, Bill Haney could call, but then Bill Haney should be like, yo, son, handle your business. Oh, Devin Haney got to be like, yo, pops, pops, I got this. I got this. He's calling me out. I'm a champ and I'm a man. I'm a man. At this point, I'm sorry. You don't gotta speak for me, Dad. You don't gotta speak. You can handle your. You can handle the things behind the scene. But this is me, Daddy. Daddy, this is me. Let me handle that. That's all I wanted to see. You a champion. Another man is calling you out. Ain't calling your daddy out. He's calling you out. I want you to take the phone from Daddy. Be like, give, give, give me the damn phone. Let me talk. You calling me out, Gary? When and where? Huh? I'm here you talking all that by, by three, four hours talking about me. How about what? What are we going to do it? Dad, talk. Man, let's make, that, let's make the fight happen, damn it. I'm young. I'm 21 years old. I'm going to get money later on regardless. You want that money? You need that money more than me, Gary. You need that money more than me. Because I got a whole career line, lined up for me. You, you, you probably got five, four more years left. What's good, Ron? What's good, Chop? I want to see that. I mean, there's fighters out there that do interviews, right? You got interviews with any setback or fire hype, and y'all do all y'all call outs. Now you have a direct line, and a dude is calling you out publicly. You could go after that guy publicly and hash it out. Let us see what's good. What's good? Now, the, the fight is not hard to make, y'all. We already seen that Al Heyman could do business with the zone. He has pushed his fighters to the zone when it comes to cross promotions. So it's not a hard fight to make. It's not a hard fight to make, ladies and gentlemen. What's good, sport? It's not a hard fight to make. We seen Al Heyman push um um Sergey Devereyevchenko to the zone to fight Triple G on a cross promotion. We seen him push Andy Ruiz to fight Anthony Joshua for a cross promotion. We seen Mikey Garcia go to the zone. We seen Daniel Jacobs go to the zone. Damn it, Gary Russell Jr. go to the zone and fight um Devin Haney. WBC has given Devin Haney a voluntary bout. Damn it, go ahead and fight. The fight is not hard to be made. Now, yes, there is a form of ducking. There's one guy saying that Devin Haney is ducking, but then his father, 
Oh, uh, um, Devin Haney's pops, Bill Haney. And shout out to all the fathers in the sport of boxing. Shout out to all the fathers in the sport of boxing, grooming their child. And, you know, so there's another form of ducking, right? And I hate the word duck because I believe the real duckers are the promoters or the managers or the advisors because at the end of the day, these are fighters. These are what, this is what they groom to do. If you see Devin Haney growing up, this is what he's meant to do. He was bred for this. Gary Russell Jr. with, with his pops and the whole family, the boxing family, this is what they bred to do. So, But to say that anybody or one of these guys are scared of one another, no. The business side is the one that's ducking. But if you claim to be a boss, like a lot of these fighters nowadays claim to be the boss, then I'm going to hold your words to accountability. What's good, Black? What's good, Dragon? What's good, Guido? I'm going to hold your words accountability. Now, there's one thing in saying, well, you, you know, what's good, what's good, Glenn? It's one thing by saying, yo, well, um, um, Bob Aram or uh, Eddie Hearn or Al Heyman, they got to handle that. You got to call my manager and they handle that. I can fight you anyway, but they got to do the business side. Okay, but when boxers be like, yo, I'm a boss and I do this and and I could get the fight and you you, you got to ask for people. See, these the Devin Haney has said that. He has said that to Teofimo Lopez. He's a boss. You don't got to answer to nobody, right? He gets credit for being the youngest promoter ever, all right? So he got to say so. He's a boss. Gary Russell Jr. said he's his own boss, right? He don't got to talk to nobody, right? Except with Al Heyman. Al Heyman make, make the fight. Now, we're always talking about that these guys are getting good money. So the money should be in the pot. They talk heavily. That they talk great about Al Heyman. Al Heyman makes good fights and look out for black fighters. That's a good. They're looking out for black fighters right there. Devin Haney, Gary vs. Jr. Good fight. What's good intangible? So I see that fight easily to be made. Devin Haney actually need that fight, just like Ryan Garcia needed Luke Campbell, so people could actually be like, you know what? Damn it. Now he's just not holding a green belt. He's actually a champion. He's a champion. VP Gary Russell Jr. Also, that's a good fight. A good fight to gauge. To gauge where Devin Haney is really, really at. Because we're already seeing Gary Russell Jr. lose to Lumachenko. We're going to get to that in a minute, Gary. 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 Damn, Gary. Your, your comments disappointed me. And that's what we're going at after. But let me just finish with this. So, that's a good fight. Gary Russell Jr. needs a big fight. He needs it. I mean, his, his career is really... I'm, I, I'm disappointed in where his career has gone. I'm actually disappointed because the dude had a lot of potential. Like I said in the beginning, I said, yo, this Gary Russell Jr. at this point of his career should have been at least top five pound for pound in the sport of boxing. That's the projection of his skills and talent. Love the fight. Love the fight. They both need it, in my opinion. They both need it, in my opinion. It's a good money fight. It's a good zone fight. PBC, I doubt they're going to, Devin Haney's going to go to PBC. You already know the zone USA is not, quote unquote, doing very, very well. Matchroom USA, excuse me, is not doing, doing very well. So, of course, yo, what's good, Seth? So, of course, I don't think that Eddie Hearn's going to be pushing that to go to PBC and get some money. Like I said, every cross-promotional that has to do with the zone or Eddie Hearn and Al Heyman, they go fight in the zone. Gary Russell need to get on the Floyd Mojo and step up away. Don't talk. Well, well, Ronald, that's what he's trying to do. And that's good that he's trying to do that. I mean, he's been calling everybody out. Devin Haney, Gary, uh, uh, um, Javante Tang Davis. Um, he's been also calling out um, um, Flo Mayweather, even telling Flo Mayweather that he that that everybody's following this Flo Mayweather type of blueprint. And when they picking their fighters, and and is and like people just want to pick fighters that's tailor made for them to look good. Like hey, he was, he was he was pulling out Flo Mayweather's card. Yo, what's good? <laughs> I got you, Johnny. I got you. I'm gonna drop it. I'm gonna drop it. Here you go. Watch. It's gonna be less than a, le, le, less than less than five or three minutes. 
you know, you know, I got to do the intro so everybody get it popping right here. Good looking out, man. Thanks for supporting the kid, Johnny. Um, I got you. Um, then let's move over with the cop. And yeah, Leo Santa Cruz, too. He called Leo Santa Cruz, had his daddy, and Leo Santa Cruz ain't going man up. Come on, man. It got to be some pride, some pride, some pride. And until you in position to fight, the hell is going on, man? Somebody run up to my daddy, man. You, 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 you going personal now, bro. Forget the business. I'm taking this personal and I'm going to get this cash. And I'm lying to fight and have a unification bout. So, of course, man, we're going to do it. Soft. Soft, Leo. Leo, soft. Soft. Anyway, so moving on to the conversation, and then this just thing came out of nowhere. We already know that that Gary Russell Jr. feels a certain way about him losing Lumachenko. You know that fight it, it, it gives him my, nightmares. It gives him nightmares. Called out Adrian Broner. Called out everybody. Called out Bud Crawford. Called out people in 147 pounds. Say he broke Bud Crawford's jaw. Calling out everybody. He just want to fight. He's desperate for a fight. And I believe that he deserve a fight. Gary Russell Jr. One of my favorite fighters. But I keep it unbiasedly, logically, and objectively. Nobody, nobody is above the law in pawn strong boxing analysis. No, 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 no. Caller asked him, do you think Lumachenko is overhyped? He said, Lumachenko is overhyped, overrated because of the complexion of his skin. Here we go again. Chose the right platform to race bait. Chose the right platform just feeding the animal. Just feeding it. Chose the right platform to race bait. Okay, here we go. Gary Russell Jr., which at that fight, I said Gary Russell Jr. was going to be Lomachenko. I had so much high hopes for Gary Russell Jr., and still do, because I love his skills. I love the speed. I love the family-orientated dude also. Love, love the family, the whole Gary Russell family. Shout out. But he can't say his overhype actually came from him beating me. He should have gave himself the credit. Lomachenko got overhyped or probably overrated because he beat me. See, I would have gave myself the credit that I was that high. But no, Gary Russell Jr. said he's overhyped because of skin of his complexion. The complexion of his skin. Sorry. The skin of his complexion. Anyway, I'm all over the place. The complexion of his skin. The complexion of his skin is white. As we all can see. Yeah, it seems like... it. When there is no type of race thing, you don't even have to break, you don't even have to bring race into the equation. But it seems like fighters always have to bring the race car. No, he's overhyped because he's white, right? 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 No, you, you're not gonna forget about that. He's probably the most prestige amateur boxer in the history of boxing, probably the best Olympian boxer. In the history of, of a hundred plus year sport. Not only that, is that Gary Russell Jr., he beat you. He outboxed you when he was one and one. He became hyped and probably overhyped. I'm not gonna say overhyped, but if he did, is by beating a high quality challenger and fighter like yourself. He should have never outboxed you the way that he outboxed you, sir, coming from a Salido fight. If anything, he got overhyped is by beating you, Gary. Not because he's white or his skin complexion. But that's what I mean, y'all. Let's talk about it. That's what I mean. It's this racism trauma. It's racism trauma that's trickling down to the boxing world when it has nothing to do with race. Because you don't want to give credit. You want to think all the credit comes because, oh, people like Lumachenko because he likes skin. The dude barely speaks English, bro. When is Lumachenko's pay-per-view bouts? What do you mean that his, his praise and, and he's overrated because he's 
white. Really? Lumachingo got a better, got have four better opponents than you, Gary. Did Mike Tyson get all the praise because of his skin complexion? How many? How, how, come on, man. Really? What, you going to say um, Canelo Alvarez get his props because of his skin complexion? Really? Are we going to go that route? You can't talk about his technique. You can't talk about his skill. His skill. You can't talk about him whooping your behind and he outboxing you. You can't talk about that. No, he gets all the, oh, he's overrated because he's white. Really, really. That's the excuse now. Because y'all can't say nothing else but bring race into the equation. A couple of months ago, Devin Haney said he will never lose a white person. What is this? Hey, what is it? Y'all don't want to give credit to any other race? Huh? What is it? I've heard the talk about that too. Oh, it's because Canelo is Mexican and he gets all this love by the WBC. Because hey, he they stripped his the WBC has stripped his ass too. The IBF has stripped Canelo Alvarez too. What are you talking about? What are this race thing? Why is racism trauma entering boxing the way it is? The different look, it's not about race. A lot of people want to make it about race. It's mostly about culture. 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 If you want to race bait, forget about the race bait. How about culture bait? Culture that. If people are lined up, for example, in Chicago, 14,000 to see um, Alexandra Usyk. Fight. It's because, not because he's white, it's because he's from Ukraine and Chicago got a good base um, 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 of a community out there in Chicago. There's a lot of Ukraines out there. So they chose Chicago because it makes sense. People out there to support their countrymen. When Ricky Hatton fought Flo Mayweather and they and, and, and in Las Vegas, and you see all the UK people come. Not because Ricky Hatton is light skin or his skin complexion. It's because he's Brit and British people came out here to support him. The same way when AJ first came over here to fight Andy Ruiz. Guess what? Brit people came over here, bought their tickets, bought all the bars to support their countrymen. See the difference? Anthony Joshua Britt, Hatton Britt. They both get support the same way. It's about culture. Culture. Now, the culture in America is that you, and oh, let's say this, that Americans do not support Americans like any other culture. They don't support their countrymen like other cultures. That's what you envy. That's what you envy. So I'm saying punch drunk. If an African-American fighters out there. Wants to bring the race card about. Oh this is why Canelo get this. Or this is why Tyson Fury get this. Or this is why Lumachenko get this. It's because they have a country behind them. That anywhere they go. They will come out and support. It's supporting the countrymen. When they're talking about Canelo, he's not representing the light skin. When we're talking about Lumachenko, he's not representing the light skin brother. He's representing Ukraine. Say the truth. American envy how all the cultures, how other cultures support their own fighters. How about ya? How about Americans? Let's support our own fighters. Like I said once before, what's good, John? There is no way that a Floyd Mayweather in Las Vegas, where he's from, of course, he's from Detroit, but of course, he makes his residency in Las Vegas. There's no way that my hometown, where I live, where I make all this money, and I'm about to fight somebody, and my opponents and his people take over the whole, the whole arena. And then y'all want to pull the race card. Ain't no race card. Y'all do not support your own. That's the real ish. And you mad. 
And y'all want to bring out the race car for what? Lumachenko is overhyped because he he's a his complexion. Stop it, Gary. Mr. Gary Russell, man. Come on, man. You have a lot of dignity. You always talk about intellect. Intellect is always it coming out your mouth. That's some bullshit that just came out of your mouth yesterday. Because if you would have whoop his ass, oh, trust me, there wouldn't be no hype with Lumachenko. If you would have whoop his ass. When you had the position to do it and you had the time to do it, well, trust me, Mr. Gary Russell Jr., which I am a fan of, but I hold things, I, I hold it. You already know how I break it down. Unbiasedly, unbiasedly, logically and objectively, ladies and gentlemen. But you should have took care of business. The fight that the, that the, that the people want to see the fight that the people want to see right now, right? What's the most major, the major fight that people want to see right now? Exhibition or, or in the pros? Earl Spence versus Bud Crawford. What's another, another fight that the whole world is talking about? Exhibition. Mike Tyson versus uh, uh, um, Roy Jones Jr. Huh? Does the world want to see them because they're, because they're, they're white, black, or whatever you want to call it? No, it's because what they did, what they did in the ring is about the legacy. legacy. Legacy reigns supreme. Legacy reigns supreme. Trust me, a lot of people wasn't giving Kawasaki all the respect. While beating the Hopkins and the Roy Jones of the world as well. Kawanaki, Kawasaki, whatever his name. Shit. I said Kawasaki. I'm about to send the link. Let's talk, bro. I'm talk. I'm done talking. <laughs> when I look at box, I don't really care about race, heritage. I just boxing skill. That's what I'm talking about, brother. Exactly, black and brown. Exactly, man. And it's not like they asked him about the race thing, right? He just came out of nowhere. The overhype is because of this. Come on, man. Come on, Gary Russell. Come on, man. <laughs> Tyson versus Jones, right? <laughs> I know what you mean by that. I know what you mean by that, bro. I'm going to send the link up, man. You're going to talk about what we've been talking about, man. We need some dialogue right here, man. We need to end this. Well, what's good, brother? We need to we, we, we need to start. We need to open up the real dialogue and talk about some real ish, man. For real. What is it, man? What is it? What is it? Name the top five cities to hold down their fighters. Texas, New York, Texas, New York, Florida, Florida. Yo, what's up, Johnny boy? Yo, yo, do me a favor, bro. Just like I say, while I'm here, just no fucking H money or Hefe. Those two, just no. I, I got you. Got, got, got you. Right, right, right. Because they just gonna fucking make a scene. But, uh, <laughs> but I got uh, you. stay at peace. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nah, but yeah, that's some bullshit. Gary, Gary shouldn't be talking like that, dog. You, you give credit to who it's deserved when it's deserved to whoever it's deserved to, and that's it, bro. I fucking hate Tom Brady. But I'm still going to tell you he's one of the best quarterbacks of all time. I'll still tell you, you know, Floyd's the second best fighter of his era, you know, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> and you know, credit credit where it's due. It's it's you know, Lomachenko's well, a good fucking fighter. That's it, you know. What do you feel? What What do you feel? Do you think that's accurate? Do you think his comments is accurate? Is it that um Floyd may? I mean, I mean, is Lomachenko overrated because he's white? Or because of skin complexion? Why do you feel so? Why do you feel he he had the need to say that? I think he's salty that he got whooped. <laughs> to be honest with you, homie, if I, if I'm being dead serious, I'd have to say he's just salty because he got he because he took the L. That's it. He's just a little salty, looking for 
something to use against them, I guess would be the best way to put it. You know what I mean? I mean, uh, you know, but man, see this. All, all, like I say, dog. All the, all Good looking the, out, chat. <laughs> Like I say, all, all, all the Mexican cats be getting mad at me when I be talking on Canelo, but I don't like Canelo. I think he's a diva. It ain't because he's fucking Mexican, dog. Like, <laughs> you know, I say, I say, shit, I look more like a Mexican than half of you motherfuckers probably do anyway. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about the fight, Devin Haney and Gary Russell Jr.? Did they green light it or, or what's the deal? Is the, they trying to, well. Oh, they trying to work it out. They trying to work it out. Um, who's that? Is that me or let me see? Do I sound staticky? No, you sound clear to me. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Um. Damn. Yeah, I saw. An, go ahead, my bad, bro. They said, yeah, he had an interview yesterday with 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 one of the one of the platforms, a barbershop conversation. Yeah, I tuned in. Yeah, yeah, I tuned in, ladies and gentlemen. Just like I tuned in to CNN. I don't like CNN, but I gotta tune in sometimes. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Exactly. Don't hurt me. So yeah, I tuned into the, the the interview because of course I like Gary Russell Jr. He he don't do a lot of interview. So I wanted to go check him out, see what he's saying. So Bill Haney got in um uh, um called up to while he was calling out his son and saying that his son was ducking that Devin Haney was ducking. Um, Bill Haney was saying that no, you overpriced yourself, and that's a form of a duck. And then he'd go like, yo, but if you're giving me the same number, whatever you're telling me, if you're telling me to, if you're giving me a number to go back and tell Eddie, how about you take that number and tell Al Heyman to make the fight? Yeah. Paraphrasing. So they saying that, oh, Gary Russell Jr., all right, I'm going to talk to Al Heyman tomorrow, whatever, and then we're going to see about that fight. Yo, Glenn, good looking out, Glenn. Yeah, but that's no I should I'll take it. I'll take it. I mean, if the rest of the division's all tied up and shit and fighting everybody else, I bro, I'm dog. I, I just went on a rant about Loma and Tio Fimo. Like, what the fuck what, what is going on with that fight, dog? I need to, is it see, I was asking everybody in my chat earlier. I'm like, yo, is it just Johnny Boy being a hothead and being impatient or 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 am I or, or am I tripping for a good cause, dog? I think I think it's just a lot of talk, you know. When you when the boxers talk a lot, regardless it's from the other side, if it's, it's the Teofimo Lopez side or the Mochito side, the Bob Aaron side, yeah. And we've been talking about this fight for even before the coronavirus. So now it's like we're frustrated. It's gonna go down. We seen Showtime come up with a whole schedule lined up for the rest of the year. Yeah. When are they gonna fight? But I think it's just. I mean, they trying to get the most of their money. Um, they don't know they're gonna do with people in it. They don't know they're trying to do the Las Vegas radar state and um, ra a new ra radar stadium. Yeah. So, I, fuck. I mean, but like I said, I mean, but if saying that is the case, if that happens, if Ryan and Luke Campbell happens, if uh, who else? There was another. Oh, Lenaro's and Fortuna, of course, too. You know, I mean, everybody else in the division's tied up. So if he were to fight Gary Russell, I wouldn't complain. Nah. Gary Russell's got a lot more experience on him in the professional. Anyway, you know, he's been in there with champions and former champ Jojo Diaz and Johnny Gonzalez and Loma and who well, the fuck else? The, 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 the Asian kid he just fought. You know, so if they're all tied up, if they're all tied up and shit, then fuck it. Why not? Shouldn't be no pay per view type shit or no something, no, <laughs> nothing like that. But I'll take it if that's, you know, like I say, if Ryan Campbell's gonna happen and Loma and Teal's gonna happen and the other one's gonna happen and everybody's tied up, I ain't gonna mind Devin Haney and uh, and uh, Gary. I'll take it, you know, yeah, yeah, if everybody's tied up in the division, you know, so. That's, that's what it is, man. That's what yeah. it is. The, but there, again, that's dependent if Brian and Luke happens, if T.O. and Loma have, you know, and everybody else is tied up and shit. Uh -huh. I mean, that fight, I, I believe that fight is going to happen. I believe that fight is going to happen. But yeah. also, I do believe that Lomachenko's, like he said, one of his Ukraine, he had, you two reject me. 
I need to get faded up bad, dog. My fucking, I look like I just fucking came out of a goddamn something. I don't know. I need to get the haircut. The barber's just opened back up over here. <laughs> um. Anybody seen the link? Yo, it looks like you. They not even let me send the link right now. What to what Lama said? No, 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 no. Um, no. the the link to the. I'm gonna send the link in private because it's not letting me send the link up here in the chat. So yeah, um, yo, good looking out, chat. Good looking out, chat. Um, okay, Glenn, up here. All right. Yo, what's good? What's good? What's good, Glenn? What's good, Smoke? What's good? What's going what's up, on, people? Yeah, what I was up, having a problem. I was having problems sending the chat like that. It wasn't letting me. Um, it's done that it, to on, me before. Yeah, on yeah. my end, is my on my end is saying, it's saying YouTube rejected your comment. This is fairly common. We're sharing a link. You may need to share the link in another way. That shit's happened to me before, too, Punch. Uh, check, check, check if you got a stream yard open in the background because that's what happened to me the other day when you heard two people. Two Glens, yeah. And you had two Glens on your channel. It's because I I, I had a, a a Streamyard open in Google. That shit, bro. When I try to do like some commentary sometimes, and I and I got it all pulled up on the desktop when I got the Streamyard and the fucking ESPN Plus and or the Zone or whatever. When I got it all on the desktop, dog, that shit be freezing up like a motherfucker, bro. It it it. it uh, I guess that's why I got a kind of half. Do it on my phone and have to do it like it's, it's I got to play with it a little bit. Because if I got it all up on one thing, that should be fucking lagging and freezing up. And so, 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 Glenn, um, I start, I start with you. I got um, Johnny's um, point on that one. What do you think about the fight with Devin Haney and um, and and Gary Russell Jr.? What do you think about his comments that he made about okay. Lomachenko's overhype because of his skin complexion? So uh, as the comment in my super chat, basically, you know, uh, with, with this, uh, basically going through a civil rights movement going on right now. And it's sad that with his platform that he chooses to go that route, number one, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, because he should be using that for something positive. Um, you know what I mean? Uh, but the, at the end of the day, also, uh, you can't really hate on somebody like you mentioned. I was hoping that you mentioned that you, you mentioned it right before you dropped the StreamYard link, which was his amateur career. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's nothing to, uh, you know, just, just laugh. You know, that's just nothing to just, like, you know, look to, to the side about. You know what I mean? Like, like he actually uh, did his thing in the amateurs. You know what I mean? An incredible resume. Only one loss. You know yep. what I'm saying? And uh, incredible resume. And then, and then for it to come in and then, you know, uh, get uh, get taught, you know, dirty old tricks by Salido, which, which he tried to avenge the laws, but Salido never wanted uh, the, the rematch. And then, you know, fights uh, Gary Russell and, and beats him. And then, makes four people quit in a row. You know what I'm saying? I don't think that's overhyped at all. You know what I'm saying? Anybody that you put in front of him so far, besides Salido doing the old man dirty tricks, which Bernard Hopkins is a legend, of, you know what I'm saying, in, in, in his own right, for doing the same thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So uh, you can't get mad at, at, uh, at Salido for, for getting away if the ref didn't call him on it. You know, and then Loma learned a lesson. He said that'll never happen again. You know, and then, uh, you know, what, what did he do? He made four, four champions quit. Exactly. You know what I mean? Exactly. And so, uh, so what can you say about that? You know, I, I feel like uh, his, his, you know, he should have thought about, but, but then again, look at what he did to uh, to Leo Santa Cruz's pops, put him on blast like that. You know, the, the man didn't even understand the language, and he's over here talking shit about his pops. You know what I mean? Yeah, dog. So that's my piece on that. You know, that was bogus as fuck, dog. If I was Santa Cruz, that shit would have been signed the moment after that happened, dog. He should have showed some. He should have shown he got some testicles and said it. And no. I, Right. Yeah, even if he went in there and got whooped, dog, it's still better than, nah, man, yeah, because my dad's sick, too, bro. I would, shit, I probably would have fought him in the locker room if I was Leo Santa Cruz. And, of course, they're going to come out with it's just business and blah, blah, blah. I think Leo Santa Cruz had a lame excuse for that, but um, but Leo Santa, I... Cruz, Leo Santa Cruz always been, like, uh, I'm a little more... um. On a childish side, like whenever people ask him like tough questions, he just smiles and like, hey, I don't know, I beat him, you know. Like he never, 
Like, yo, I fucking, I came with the, the game plan. I did this, I did that. Like, he doesn't break it down. He just smiles. I'm like, hey, I, I, I threw a swing and it went right through his neck. You know, he knocked me, he laid down, you know, and that's it. You know what I mean? Like, and, he and, never and, actually articulates anything. And, you know? and, to, and to be fair, not, well, not to be fair, but just to call it this way, not, every, not all boxers are actually like fighters. Not all boxers are street. They're not gangsters. They ain't thugs. These guys are just groomed to the sport and they know how to box and they know how to play the point game. This is they not they're not like yo, even you could take a a a, a <laughs> boxer Boy. that is very dedicated to the to, to the craft to the sport, and then you put them in a street element. That doesn't mean they're gonna react the same. So I understand <laughs> this guy's not gonna react. See, Leo Santa Cruz is not gonna react like he's in the street. He's not gonna react that way. He's that's not probably that's not who he is. He's just a groomed boxer. He's a nice kid. He's nice. He's yeah. a nice kid. He's not. He's not. I, I want to root for Leo Santa Cruz because he's 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 always a class act. He's a humble kid. But he I, he got to fight somebody though. At the same breath, you know exactly. I mean? yeah, exactly. You know, it's two sides of the coin. Just like with this, not to change subjects. Just like with this whole Canelo Dazone shit, with them arguing about money. Like, okay, well, you can make the case that. Canelo wants his contract and all this other shit. But on the flip side of that, you can say, okay, well, there's a fucking pan if crisis going on right now. Yeah. Just bite the bullet, you know, so. So let me ask, so, uh, Smoke, Smoke, time in on that one. The same question I asked for Glenn um, and then Guido go after Smoke. Um, yeah, so um, as far as the Devin Haney, the Gary Russell Jr. fights concerned, uh. I think it is ridiculous. It's absurd, right? I, I, I think that Gary Russell is just talking crap. Like, the dude fights at 126. He came up from 122. Um, if Let me see him fight at 135 if you want me to care about you as a lightweight. Don't just step up to Devin Haney. Like, I don't believe you, first off, and I'm not interested in the fight, secondly. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I think it's... I think um, Gary Russell's too little, really. Um as far as his comments about overhyped because he's white, um, I, you know, uh, amateur background, is there somebody else that we can compare to that's not white? Um, Guillermo Rigondeaux, um, you know, also two-time gold medal. Yeah. Um, but he's not on the really public. The he gets a lot of respect. He gets respect, but not too much hype, right? Because that's what we're talking about is hype. Um well, the, the guy why, 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 why would that be? And for me, I, you know, part of it, I think, could be about Bob Arum. Another part of it could be about the, the actual nature of the sport and where, you, you know, um, there's not that many white champs. Um, the, you know, you may want to get one. Maybe that's what Bob Arum likes. So that's why Bob Arum was pumping Loma. I, I mean... I don't know what you know. Just from the just from the statement, Loma is overhyped because he's white. To me, I, I I don't know. It didn't say enough. It 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 brings questions that I would like to have answers to, but I don't know. I, I, Loma to me isn't that overhyped either to begin with. I mean, he's kind of overhyped, but he came in. You know, Bob Arum came in talking about how he's better than Muhammad Ali when he had like three fights, right? So stuff like that. Yeah, that, that's overhyped. But that's your promoter. Uh, yeah. Your promoter happens to be Bob Arum, who's one of the be you know the biggest promoters in the world. So him promoting that, eh, I don't know. I, I don't know. It's the nature of the beast. Eh, you know, Tyson Fury is Tyson Fury overhyped right now? Like maybe. You know, is it because he's white? Maybe. You think so? Maybe. Not I maybe. mean, maybe it has something to do with it. Give me something definite. No, Come I mean on. I don't know. I li literally, I did for, for me. I don't know. Like I, I when I when when I looked at the Tyson Fury Wilder one, and I saw all of the people who were picking Tyson, who wanted Tyson Fury to win, they seem to be a you know they seem to be white people from America, right? Um, like Tyson, like Tyson, Floyd Mayweather, Andre Ward, right? right. I'm not, and this is just anecdotal. This is just anecdotal. I'm not saying that this is the case, right? I'm just I'm seeing. I saw a lot of guys who weren't you know, to me, didn't strike me as uh, boxing fans from their knowledge base, right? But they were coming out of the woodwork uh, hoping this guy would win, right? So I, I under, and, you know, that's that's the way that the, the combat sports work. We are, we are ethnic-based and people root for their guy. Um, is it racism to say a guy is that because he's white? I, I, I don't know. Maybe. Can I say, th can I say something? Because uh, I know we don't want to jump on, but just to respond to no, that, you right? Good. 
you know, mm -hmm. um, you know, from the hype. I don't, I don't want to talk about hy hypotheticals because you know, when it comes down to it, a lot of people came out the woodworks that really weren't fans uh, for for Wilder, and and created even you know uh, race baiting channels. You know what I'm saying? Without knowing boxing, because you go to those boxing channels, they don't know shit about boxing. And number two, um, you you thought you said Rigandau, Rigandau didn't. Who did he lose to again? Huh. What? Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, so, no, so yeah. wait, but we're, we're, right, but, but we're talking about before he was before the reason why he took the fight was because he wasn't getting hyped, right? Yo, I mean, it's fine that he lost, but I'm talking about we're talking about a guy who was hyped from having one fight, two fights. Like Loma's been pretty well represented and pretty well um, promoted his entire career. Let me say, uh, I don't, I don't know that that's the same. I don't know if that's the same thing for Gary Morigandau. I'm not saying that it's because he's black and he's white, but I'm just saying you can't just put it on an amateur career. Because there's guys who have amateur careers who didn't get that kind of love, and I'm not, and and and, and really, there's a, for me, the, boxing at the, at one point was dominated by white people, right? So th that was the draw. The, is that is that market still there? Uh, I, I don't know. I, I I literally don't know. I don't see that. I don't see Loma as this huge draw. So. Uh, you know, I don't know about the overhype thing. I think it's just well promoted. I don't know that Loma is overhyped. I don't know that I even agree that Loma is overhyped. I think that he was very well promoted early on. Okay, Smoke. First of all, let's say let me say this. First, Bob said Lomachenko might be the most skilled fighter he's seen since Muhammad Ali. Second of all, Rigandial puts on a bunch of fucking dud fights that 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 make people go to bed. When Lomachenko fights, he puts on master glasses and or their great fights, like with Linares, like with Campbell. Those were competitive fights. Like with Russell. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah okay, no, Russell no, was that. Hang, okay. hang on, smoke, smoke, smoke. Let me finish my point. So none of that black, this dude's Cuban. Nah, man. I'm fucking, I mean, I hung around a bunch of fucking Cubans, dog. And I'm Montequilla. I'm butter boy to them, dog. You understand me? Yeah, man, they ain't no right, man. Don't none of that shit matter. It ain't because Bob don't give a fuck whether you black, white, Asian, or none of that, dog. It, it, all his fighters are foreigners, dog. He's got fucking. He's got one of the biggest fights in this whole stable right now is between a Japanese guy and a Filipino, dog. Yeah. Okay, I I got it. That's but what I don't know if you want if you want to speak for Bob's uh, um racial equality. I don't listen. Top Rank was formed. As a, a multi-ethnic company, there was a there was it was Muhammad, it was Elijah Muhammad's kid and Bob Arum, right? I'm not saying that he was not going to try to do business with black people or whatever. What I'm saying is I don't know what what graphs Bob is looking at. Maybe there's a demographic. Maybe there's an untapped market for white fighters in America. I don't know. Like the, the issue, the, 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 the whole the, the issue really is when what I'm saying is not about Loma's last fight, Luke Campbell. I'm talking about his first fight. His second fight, his third fight, those were not scintillating uh, okay, fights. Okay, okay, the, the, okay, let let, okay, let okay, me finish. Okay. You wanted me to let you finish, so let me finish, right? So he's been uh, hyped this entire time, right? And he hasn't been having these exciting fights the entire time. Okay, nobody has an exciting fight an entire time. Pacquiao versus Algeri wasn't exciting. What the fuck? Does right, that but we talk about Loma well, though. No, no, we're not, no, 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 no. Hang on. And you said, well, he's not that big of a draw. Who gives a fuck how big of a draw he is, dog? So you're too fixated on who brings in the most money, who who does the most pay-per-view buys, dog. All everybody wants to see is the best fight the best. Nobody gives a shit how much money. Why are you counting another man's money, dog? I don't give a fuck who's bigger between Canelo and AJ. None of that shit matters. What goes inside in the ring is what counts, dog. That What goes inside inside the ring is what counts. It's relevant to the quote that that we're talking about. He said that Loma's overhyped. So the idea of him being overhyped to me seems like he would be this huge thing, right? And I don't know that Loma's that no, no, big no, no. to begin with. I know that he's well promoted. I don't well, know that he's overhyped. Well, so on, hold, hold on, smoke, because because the 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 caller said overhyped. Gary Russell Jr. said overrated. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going by, I, I'm going by okay. both, right? Because overhyped and overrated is two different things. You know, um. Because hype is all what promotion promotional companies do or whatever to hype you up, hype this fighter up overrated or something else, how they rated you as a fighter. So Gary Rosa Jr. said that Lomachenko was overrated because of the skin complexion, but the caller was like, is he overhyped? Overrated so, so, so. and white? I, I, no, no, I don't no, no, know. No. That, yeah, I don't know. I don't buy that one. Um, I think that's more about Gary Russell getting his ass whooped by Loma. 
Okay, that's that's what I'm saying. You know, yeah, I, I, what like, I'm saying yeah, is they, they say that he's overrated because he's white. And uh, I, I see what Loma does in the ring. Loma is not let, overrated. Let me be specific. Let me be specific. I don't want to yeah. put on oh, my own. Oh, I, 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 he said because of his skin complexion, he's overrated. So his skin complexion can be a, a, a Latino that's that that's that's light, but knowing the nature of the whole conversation, yes, yeah, because the because uh, the the because he's white. Right. I mean, so here's 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 really the thing. Like you know, uh, I for me, I'm looking at the boxing demographic, right? And you see that it's mostly in America, it's mostly black and Latino, right? And then, you know, but boxing is also fueled by casual fans. So to me, there's an entire untapped market, right? If you can get somebody and and people gravitate to people that look like them, right? They can feel like there's a shared experience. I feel like there's maybe an untapped market, and maybe you can't over it, like, but. You take a, a you take a guy like Caleb Plant for the same thing. I, is Caleb Plant overrated because of his scale and c- complexion? I I don't know. I don't think so. I, yeah, I don't. I just don't think Loma's overrated. So yeah, I think that's more like sour grapes. Well, and yeah. that's that's what I said, Smoke too. Before you jumped on, I said I think Gary's just salty because he got his ass whooped. That's yeah. it. You Guido know, and, and real quick punch. I was just gonna say, but that's a shitty thing to say. Yeah. From yeah. Gary, that's a shitty thing to say. And if you put the shoe on the other foot, motherfuckers would be up in an uproar. Let's keep it a buck now. If you put the yeah. shoe on the other foot, motherfuckers would be going to ape shit right now. If Loma no, yeah, because because everybody doesn't have the same experience, right? So it's not like every comment is going to hit every community the same way. I'm just saying, dog. I'm just saying. If Loma Chinko said, oh, "Oh, Gary Russell's overhyped because of his skin complexion," motherfuckers would have been freaking the fuck out, dog. And you know that, Smoke. Yeah, I, right. I, I get it, and okay. there's a reason why that's the, there's a reason why that is, and and I, I get why that would be. And I, I mean, Gary Russell Jr. being overrated, I don't know that he is over. Like the, I, the, both comments to me on their face, I feel like Gary Russell Jr. is underrated. Actually, like people pan him because he doesn't because of his activity, but actually he's an underrated fighter, right? But uh, Loma, I think is he's all right rated. I, you know, I think he's okay rated. I don't think he's overrated at all. Like you know, Loma's the goods. Yeah, I, 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 I think, I think most of the people, most of the boxing minds, most of the boxing minds, I believe so. I, I'm just, I'm just assuming that they know that Lumachenko is not overrated. They're not. He, he's not overrated. He's, he's, he's done work. He's done work in the amateur circuit. He's done things in the professional level. And the guy that's actually saying what he's saying, he got beaten by Lumachenko. Yo, so, who trains? Who trains with a freaking uh, tennis ball attached to their head and just punching it out the air and freaking like you know what I'm saying like hopping on his hands? Besides Tio, you know what I mean? But uh, yo, peace to uh, I know we don't want to talk, but peace to uh, uh, friends. He he just came in. Peace, friends, and uh, and Kilua, Kilua. I know, I know you like to talk. You should join the panel, bro. What's up, Kilua? What's up, friends? Yo, um, what's up, Raider? Um, yo, um, Guido. Time in on, on yeah. what you think about the fight with the fight with um Gary Russell Jr. and Devin Haney. What you think is is it good for both of their careers? If you think it's a good uh, fight, or got yeah. a fight happening, and then talk uh, about the, the what do you think about um Gary Russell Jr.'s comments? I mean, it sounds good. You know what I'm saying? See, they gotta make that fight happen, but there's a lot of talking going on. You know what I'm saying? I won't believe it until they sign the contract. It's you know Gary speak a good game. You know what I'm saying? He speak a very good game. You know. Yeah, and you know, I'm not surprised about the LDBC channels. You know how they are, bro. I'm not even surprised about that shit. About they always gotta make everything about race, you know. So uh, it don't surprise me. You know, Junior saying something an LDBC channel thing. But before you and, answer, and, that, and let me say this. Let me say this. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me say this. I'm getting sick and tired of the LDBC. They they shit on on Virgo Ortiz the other day. You know what I'm saying? They say he's overhyped, overrated. You know what I'm saying, bro? It'd be the same LDBC nigga saying the same bullshit, you know? No, I don't know. I think give what it, you're uh, talking about is just a hunt for a witch, actually. I think you generalize. If, if Virgo would have been, this out. If a, a been black, statements. if he would have been black, yo, check this out. If he would have been black, then he would have been hype all over the social media. He would have said, oh, he's the next Mayweather. He's the next answer in war. He's the next Mike Tyson. You know what I'm saying? It is, it is what it is, you know? Yeah, that's a, that's what I so on the LDBC channels I'm on. That's what I hear. But I just want to say one last thing. I didn't mean to cut. I'm, I'm sorry, Guido. I, I promise. I didn't mean to disrespect and cut your wisdom short. I, I just uh, left this one comment out uh, when I was talking. And um, Leo Santa Cruz's dad is not some civilian, right? He's also a promoter. I, I think all of it was it, it was part of game. 
I don't think that he was just being disrespectful to an old sick man. Oh, okay. My fault. I'm off. I was just putting the. But, 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 but if the father was promoting a fight, then the fight would have happened after that. True. True. So I don't know how, how, how valid that point is. To be no, honest, I didn't, say that, I didn't say that. I didn't say that the father was promoting the Gary Russell Jr. Leo Santa Cruz fight. I was saying that the father is a promoter. That thing happened at a promotion but, that the father was was part of. Right. I'm just saying that the father is part of the boxing game. He's not just a civilian on the street. Like like when when Jarrell Miller when Jarrell Miller went at AJ's mom, that was just a civilian mother at an event. That Let to me, me that is a this. different kind of thing than going up to a promoter and like I, basically trying to call your son out, right? I got I got you, but I'm not going to let you steer me off the topic. So so what I'm saying is is that what was the re- that's like well when you throw in uh, uh, irrelevant uh, uh, information into a math question or, or on a, on a regents exam or something like that. You know what I mean? On a state exam, like like when you throw irrelevant information into it, you're trying to lead somebody to to, to see that point. So so if, if he wasn't trying to promote the fight, why are you bringing up that he was a promoter? Because that fight would have happened if he was trying to promote the fight. Because that's not my point. You're making that to my point. I wasn't saying that Gary Russell did it. And the dad was, I, I wasn't saying that the dad was in on a promotion of a Leo Santa Cruz fight. What I'm saying is that the dad himself is also part of the boxing community. That okay. was only my point. He's Let not just a civilian. This. He's not a civilian in the stands kind of thing. Let me just say this real fast. Let me just say this real fast. Regardless, Gary Russell's a, 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 a street kid, bro, from D.C. He should know better than not to disrespect somebody's fa- sick father like that, period, dog. You don't do that. That's the shit. That's the shit that'll take it to a notch. I mean, Leo Santa Cruz just isn't cut from that. But that's the kind. And you know that, too, Smoke. That's the kind of shit that'll go take it past boxing, bro. And yeah. you know that, dog. Facts. Now let, let, let me ask let, Kemar, time in because I want to ask another question to the panel. What's up, G? What's good, my brother? You're right here, keep chilling. What you think of what you think about the fight? Um, Gary Russell Jr. versus Devin Haney if it happens, and what you think about the comments that um Gary Russell Jr. made about Lomachenko is overrated because of the skin of the skin of his complexion. The well, complexion I gotta agree of his skin. With, I have to agree with Greg over here because it's all talk, you know, until it actually happens. For all we know, the fight could happen in 2040. You know, it's all talk. <laughs> yeah. So, and, and about those comments, but, but what do you think about that fight? What do you think about that fight, though? If it does happen, what do you think about it? Well, um, Gary's not really a lightweight, so I think Devin Haney will win if it happens. Okay. Yeah. He's also being trained by Mayweather, so you know the hype in there. I okay. like to see it, though. Don't get me wrong. What do you think about the um his comments about... um? Lomachenko is is overrated because of the skin of uh because of the complexion of his skin. Um, what, what did he say though? Like, uh, what exactly? What, what they did asked he... him. They they asked him. What do you think that that Lomachenko is overhyped? And he said, "Of course, Lomachenko is overrated. He's overrated. We know that he's overrated because of this because of the complexion of his skin." Oh, uh, what do you well, think about this? Maybe I don't know. They're mad because I, I don't know. It hasn't been a while since a black fighter has been pound for pound king. It could be that, or they actually think he's all hype. Could be my it's my opinion. Yo, what's good? Right. What's good, black? What's up, fellas? What's, what's good, up, my dude? brother? Hold on. Was Kelmar done? Oh yeah, I'm Killer done. Kelmar <laughs> done talking. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Because nah, I, I just want to, hey, I just want to speak on the on the Devin Haney, uh, Jerry Russell. Look at man, everybody, everybody want to be calling Devin Haney out, right? And yeah. and I understand Devin Haney to fight somebody. He don't fight nobody, right? But I don't, I don't want people get to a point where people start saying that fucking Haney's ducking Gary Russell Jr. You know, but he, I wouldn't say that he shouldn't take that fight. But if he doesn't take that fight. Then I I don't think people can start saying that Haney's ducking Gary Russell. Black. Because Gary Russell kind of don't even belong in that division. You know what I'm black. saying? Like Haney got bigger fish to fry. Yo, Black, check this out, dog. You can't say nobody from two weight classes below is ducking anybody. That's what can't get that's what pissed me off with that whole Teal or uh, Lomachenko and Pacquiao shit. Like bitch. Them boys is two weight classes apart. Now, Andre Ward and Triple G, they two weight. How the fuck are you going to say somebody two weight classes lower than them? Is the, man, come on, bro. Yeah. Get out of here with that. And so, Gary yeah, Russell's I mean, already on the saw, decline. Gary Russell's already on the decline. 
and, and Devin Haney has a bright future ahead of him. Now, yeah. I'm not saying he shouldn't take the fight or whatever. I don't think he's going to take the fight, but that's a whole different topic. I'm just saying Gary Russell needs to leave these youngsters alone and do his own thing because these youngsters got a path already set for him. And Gary Russell's already in, on the end of back into his career I trying to you. scrape for pennies. Like, I don't think it's cool that he comes at the youngsters and trying to call the youngsters out. And I just want to put my two cents in. I don't think we should start saying that Devin Henney is ducking him or in any type of way. Yeah, salute to you. Yeah, I mean, nobody – after after Rigo and, you know, Rigo Loma and Mikey Spence, like, really, what are we talking about? Like, why – like, if you're going to start – if you're going to talk shit after the fight happens, why try to talk shit about – why try to hype it up before it happens? Like, you know that these guys are not in the same weight class. You know that even Devin Haney is not going to be competing at 135. He's going to be competing at 147 one day. Like, why are we – like, what, what what is this about for real? So the I same mean, plot – I, I I think I think I think is that we're boxer fans is desperately to know when first first and foremost when is Gary Russell Jr. going to fight again and who he should fight should he fight a name and things of that nature where Devin Haney goes is he got a belt where most half of the people I'm not going to say everybody but include I, I include myself that I would like him to you know. To have that belt more than more than just a, a a I want him to be more than just a belt holder. I want that belt to be some some, some type of significant. And I know that even if he fights Gary Russell Jr. and he beats him, he's gonna be like, well, Gary Russell Jr. moved up. Yet I still believe even if he fights Gary Russell Jr., that's the best skillful fighter that he has fought in his resume. Even at 135. And if the guy said that he's weighing 140 right now, um, Gary Russell Jr. said, then. 135 is not far fetch. Was Kel Brook the most skillful fighter Triple G faced? I mean, what's the point, though? Like, once you whoop a little dude's ass, you don't give credit. Was Mikey Garcia the most skillful dude that Errol Spence faced? Is Rigo still the most skillful dude Lumber yeah, but faced? These, but these guys like, aren't there, but these these guys are in their prime smoke. I do believe that that's still a hard task for a 21-year-old to fight Gary Rosa Jr. That's not gonna be easy for, for Haney. I don't. Uh, you think you think that fight is going to be easy for Haney? Gary I, I don't think Jr. that. that I, I don't. I think it's a lose lose for Haney. Like Gary Russell Jr. Yeah, I agree. Like, it, it, yeah, it's, it's it's just a lose lose. Like he's not going to get credit for winning, and he's not going to get credit for losing. Like, nope. I I I, I it will I, not I, work I, I in his favor just, if he I, loses. It will I not just, work in his favor. I disagree. Now, uh, because I think that y'all putting Devin Haney like he's a prime type fighter and and one of the pound for pound dudes in the sport of boxing. Yeah, yeah I, like, what now, the fuck now, he now, did? He hasn't done sick. Now, now, I don't now, understand how you're hyping him up like that. Now, if you're talking about, if you're talking about, let's say, if the, uh, if, if Gary Russell Jr., um, I mean, like, yo, it, it, Devin Haney got a lot to prove. That's all I'm saying. He got a lot to prove. Y'all talking to like, oh, it's, it's a lose lose situation. Like, if he's going nah, to everything right now is a gain situation for Devin Haney. Punt, yo, punch. He, he, he ain't getting no credit for being Santiago. Yeah, punch. He, he he ain't made his bones yet. Devin Haney just ain't made his bones yet, bro. Is what it is. That's what we just got to see him make his bones. Same thing with Ryan, for that matter. You know, we just, you know, we this is this is the thing with these young guys coming up. We can speculate about, oh, this guy's gonna be great. This guy's gonna be great until we see him fight somebody. We don't know. You know what I'm saying? The rest of it, we got to see these boys. Like Teofimo is the exception to that because he went in there and smoked Kome. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Who's a veteran and a champion and a title holder and all this other shit? These other kids ain't do. You know, we got to see. You know, it looks all well and good, but we got to see him fight somebody before we determine how good. You know what I'm? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Hey guys, is 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 um is Linares a win win for Ryan Garcia? I don't think so. He loses to Linares, he's gonna look bad. It's not gonna be a win win at all. It's gonna be a set a setback, a huge no. setback. What if 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 Lenardis beats um Ryan? You mean or if he? Yeah, or, or, yeah, yeah. Is he fighting Luke Campbell? Some of these guys, no, 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 no. like Tio, Tio fighting Loma is definitely a win-win because if he loses, he's losing to Loma. Yeah. You lose to Lenardis. You lose to Luke Campbell. You lose to Gary Russell Jr. Moving up two weights. That's not a win-win to me. That's a but, setback, a huge yeah, setback. Yeah, Yo. but see, but see now, black and brown. Now we thinking like 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 promoters and managers. That's the problem. Now we're thinking that if he loses, is a setback. 
So now we can't put Devin Haney in the ring because of a lose lose situation. If he if Gary Rosa Jr. actually beat Devin Haney, then that's a setback for Devin Haney. See, now we're thinking like that's promotion manager thing. We're not thinking as at 21 years old, nothing should be a setback if you lose. Did did um, um did Zab Judah took a setback when when he lost in, in his first fight? The Amir Khan took a step back when he lost to, to, to Prescott. The Canelo Alvarez took a step back when he lost to, to, to Floyd Mayweather. The um the Manny Pacquiao took a step back when he lost in his career. They still became greats. We shouldn't be mentioning. No, I agree with you. We shouldn't be mentioning if they take a step back. It's still it's still a win win situation for Devin Haney at this age. Now, if he's twenty, no, I agree with old, you. I agree. I agree. See, see, here's the thing. Here's here's really what it is. Like if Gamboa fought Gary Russell Jr. I would favor Gamboa in the fight. That's that is the problem with the fight. Like the dude is too little for me to actually pick as a competitive thing. So even it's a name, cool, but as far as cutting your teeth and saying that you can project some some sort of greatness onto Devin Haney, I, I just don't get it. So you're looking at you're looking at Gary Russell Jr.'s height and not skill. You think that because he's too little, then you could say that about a lot of great fighters like Mike Tyson. He was too little for all the heavyweights. Yeah, but he was, but he was a heavyweight. It's not like he was a light heavyweight and came in and did it. Like so, you know, like a Michael Moore. Like, yeah, he was a devastating light heavyweight. Or, about you Manny know, Pacquiao. Or, 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 or about Manny Pacquiao, Durant? right? But he moved up, right, right, right? So you got you have guys who are moving uh, up in weight. I, I got it. So if you think if you think Gary Russell Jr. can pop like a guy or is or is Alexis Aguayo, then Fine. No, I don't. I, I, I don't. Smoke. I don't think I Gary Russell Jr. is that thing. I, what I I'm saying, say right? So we're talking about the, we're smoke, talking about smoke, Gary Russell Jr. Let, let, let me finish, bro. Let me finish. Like uh, you, you yelled your names, and what I'm saying is those guys aren't Gary Russell Jr. Gary Russell I Jr. Doesn't that. have pop. I didn't say he they doesn't. Were. He doesn't. What well, my point is, he doesn't even have pop for a light guy for a 122. He didn't have pop. So like at least Michael Moore was knocking dudes the hell out at light heavyweight. Right before he moved up and was dangerous, right? But but Gary Russell Jr. is not doing that. He's decisioning guys at 122 and 126. How? What am I supposed to take away from that? Moving up, skipping 130, who I think Bichelle would knock him out, who I think Shakur would beat him, who like there's guys at, in every single weight class who I think would beat Gary Russell Jr. Why the hell would I be looking at Devin Haney like this? I think I think Gamboa, who everybody was panning. When Devin Haney was talking about fighting Gamboa, I think Gamboa would beat De Gary Russell Jr. Does that? So does what Devin, am I? Does, so what are we talking about? Let me, let me, okay, so me. does Devin Haney got this extreme power also versus um like like um you know compared to his opponents that he's been beating? I mean, he, I don't I don't see Devin Haney as I, being I, I, this monster of a puncher. Hey, man, if he could shriek down to one twenty six, maybe he would be. Smoke. Let me say this: I wasn't comparing Gary Russell to Alexis Arguello. I was just saying you could still move up and be successful. I was throwing names out there. That's all, dog. All right? Yeah. yeah. And and yeah. Obviously, Gary Russell's nowhere fucking near Alexis Arguello, or never will be. But any, <laughs> but uh, but uh, Ray, oh. what's good, my brother? What you feel? Yeah. Hey, what's up, man? What's cracking, guys? How's it going? I'm doing good, what's man. What's up, dog? How you doing, bro? What, what's up, man? What's up, my boy? What's up, my what's up, boy? Buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. What's up? Uh, hey, uh, hey, 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 yeah, the uh, Gary Russell and uh, I, I was I was hearing that interview that the that dad had with uh, Gary Russell and uh, um, I didn't hear the part where he said about the light skin complexion thing. I, I didn't hear the whole interview, but yeah, that's interesting because I, I don't I don't believe that. I think. Lomachenko is up there for a reason. He's got the skills. You know, he's beating everybody. He beat like four guys in a row. Made him quit. Um, he has the skills. So I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't believe that. I think he has probably sour, a little sour because he lost to him. You know. Yeah. And uh, as far as uh, him uh, going up to one thirty five and fighting Haney, man, Russell don't even have power at fucking one twenty six. I mean, what is he gonna do at, at one thirty five? You know, and he doesn't throw enough punches. I mean, he's he's real strategic. He doesn't waste punches. Um, so going up to 135, not throwing enough punches and not having power, I cannot see him winning that fight at all against Devin Haney. And uh, Black and Brown is right. Uh, Devin Haney is not going to get any credit for that. So, I mean, I don't, I don't even know. Uh, why, I, I mean, why, I'll still see the fight. I'll still see the fight for sure. Why, why wouldn't he get credit for it? Because he's bringing up a guy two two weight classes down. 
You know? I, I understand, but this is, uh, I mean, if you're looking at, if y'all looking at Gary Russell Jr. just like any other guy, then I understand. Or maybe y'all don't, y'all don't look at Gary Russell Jr. like a, a, an extreme skill type of fighter. Then I understand if y'all look at it that, from that point. No, but I don't look I, at Gary Russell Jr. I, like that. I mean, I agree with you. He he is a name. He's somebody that's good. He's in his prime. But um, Spence didn't get credit for Mikey. Canelo didn't get credit for Khan. Uh, and, and that's just the way it is. You know, like you, you, you're you fighting guys that are not in your weight class, uh, even though they're names. But but that's what I but 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 that's what I mean. I'm sorry to cut you off, but that's what I mean though. That you, that is compared to guys that's already in their prime. You compare the Canelo Alvarez, compare the the um, Triple G, compare these guys already legitimate legitimate even pound for pound type of dudes. Devin Haney is not pound for pound. He still got things to prove. He still look Devin Haney up to this point still have not even fought a southpaw yet. Gary Russell Jr. is a southpaw. Yeah, I, I think I think you're uh, kind of like uh, saying I, I know what you're saying saying that you know these guys are in the prime, where and when David Haney is not in his prime, but it's it's just the fight, you know what I mean? Like it, it it's it doesn't look good. It doesn't matter if you're in your prime or not. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. You're fighting somebody that's in the lower weight class that doesn't belong in your weight class. That's why they don't get credit. I I think. Yo, so so to add on to this, like, so I think when it when it comes to a Gary Russell Jr. fight, um, yeah, we give him credit for hand speed, but then um, you know, there's a lot of fighters right now that are learning that those angles, you know what I'm saying? That's what gave him problems to work versus Lomachenko. He got outboxed. So now not only do you have a problem with the fact that he got an L versus Lomachenko, which which Lomachenko's name is way bigger than his right now in boxing yeah. across the world, but then now you have a, a promotional problem because he he rarely fights. You know what I mean, and and uh, he keeps declining offers. You know what I mean because he, he thinks he's he's worth, worth more. more. You know, so I mean he's got a promotional issue. He's got an age issue. He's got a, a, a you know um, um, you know a disadvantage when it comes to uh, uh, up and coming boxers that are more relevant right now and are showing more uh, enhanced skills. So you know, speed is great. It's great. It was great when he was coming up. He should have taken advantage of, of that back then. Now, now you know, not only. Are you like going against promoting yourself by, by by making racial slurs? You know what I'm saying? But but you also haven't promoted yourself really in the last five years anyway. So this is this is the first thing you want to come out with is, is that hey uh, you know white white people you know he's 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 got an advantage because he's white like come on man you know there, there's just too much uh, negativity for him to make any money right now. Yeah, I mean. I I I I agree I agree with that and I but I but. I do, I do disagree. I'm not saying on, on anybody that feel like um, Devin Haney and um, Gary Russell Jr. is not a good fight. Uh, I, I think we're talking like Devin Haney is some type of pound for pound, where you know, some type of fighter that he's not, it's not going to gain, it's not, it's not going to be anything significant in gaining any type of respect for the win or things of that nature. And the reason why, that's what I'm trying to say. The reason why is because Devin Haney is more relevant than Gary Russell right now. You see what I'm saying? So, yeah, so he, to, to, the, to the casual, he's fighting a nobody. Even though we know who Gary Russell Jr. is, he's not relevant right now. You know what I mean? He hasn't been relevant because he's not taking fights. I, I but, but I, I feel you on that. He's not relevant in, in, in fighting, right? But to this day, the if if you ask the relevancy of Devin Haney right now, and I said this before, rather people think I'm joking around. His relevancy is working out with Floyd Mayweather. No, no, not, his, not not Devin Haney. Not Devin Haney. I'm saying Devin Haney's relevant. He's more relevant than Gary Russell. I, I, I was saying the flip side of that. I was saying, oh. De, like, he's relevant. Gary Russell's less relevant, even though he should be more relevant no, 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 by no. this time. No, no, but that's what I'm saying. I'm saying um, in, 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 in marquee-wise, for me, Devin Haney is relevant because he's working out with Floyd Mayweather and the social media and, and platform and things of that nature. It's not because people are, are saying, yo, did you remember the last Devin Haney fight? Yo, I can't wait for the, the, the yo, I couldn't, the highlight reel is so incredible. Nah, they, Devin Haney right now is highlight, his highlight reel. When you think about Devin Haney, you think about Devin Haney in the TMT gym and working out with, you don't think about Devin Haney and what the fighters that he fought. 
Oh, I could be wrong. Anybody could tell me okay. anything. What's his relevance? Hey, 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 listen, I, I, but you don't think the same, the same thing is true for Gary Russell Jr. Like, unless you're a purist, like, who's Gary Russell Jr.? The guy that lost to Loma way back when? Like, you remember, Maybe you know Jojo Diaz? Maybe? Yeah, that's that. Yeah. Um, you know, it's not like Gary Russell Jr. is the like people are like, hey, let's see that. Who who the hell is he fighting outside of purists, right? And even the purists, right, like you ask the guys who are you know these hardcore fa- heads, you know about their pound for pound list. Gary Russell Jr. ain't coming up, even though not, skills wise he yeah. should be top five. I feel, definitely top ten, right? I, I I feel you. That's what I said. That's what I said in my video that. I projected this years ago that I, around this time that Gary Russell Jr. would be top five pound for pound, including with the Mises Andre. I would have thought in 2014, 2013, that these guys would have been at least pound for pound around this time. It ain't no, it's a, Yeah, that, and that's what I'm saying. Like I, I feel like it would be a gift to Gary Russell Jr. to get the fight, but I don't know what we're supposed to say about Devin Haney afterwards, right? Like, like he's a you beat in underrated great highly skilled little dude that can't break wind two or you know three weight classes down mm. so it, oh, i'd say this it only how <laughs> you know how relevant the, you know how funny thing boxing is i bet if gary russell jr would do some pad work with floor mayweather people would be like wow Oh my God! I would like to actually see this fight now. <laughs> I think it's that. Yeah, that, that maybe that, when that, Floyd was rel- maybe when Floyd was considered a boxer versus what he whatever the hell he is now. That would be promotion, but then I bet you all the casuals would think that he's like an up and coming boxer would not even recognize the fact that he already had a career where he should have already been uh, established by, by now. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, I, I, and I agree with that. His career should have been established on like the way his career has gone. I definitely do not like the way his career has gone. Yet, what I, all I'm saying is, I do believe that if you look at any, I mean, what okay, what opponent do we feel like De- Devin Haney should face, Devin Haney should face next? What's out Yo, there for him? All right, it's, so it's, there's no other. Fighter? There's no everybody else is uh, caught up right now. Then, I, then I would say, yo, I, I mean, some people are getting mad at me, but yo, throw Felix Verdejo there. That's not a bad start. That's not a bad start at all. Mm-hmm. It's not. That's a good fight. I think he just finished fighting. I don't know how, how if you're gonna go back to the to to training camp to get that Devin Haney fight. Yeah, because I'm looking, at, I'm looking at the I'm looking at the business side of which that Devin Haney got a voluntary bout. You know that he could pick actually who could fight. If Pedraza if, maybe huh? bring Pedraza to 135. You know Pedraza's not bad. See, I, I see, I feel you, but I'd rather see Gary Russell Jr. than Devin Haney. The Pedraza. Right. Uh, uh, right. So I, I think Pedraza beats Gary Russell Jr. Nah. <laughs> I don't, I disagree uh, with that. Yeah. Uh, I think Gary uh, Russell's okay. too scared for Pedraza. Yeah, okay, but, 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 but okay. So. You could, you're bugging I, 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 Come I, on. Jojo, Di- jo- no, Jojo I, Diaz, Jojo I, Diaz, if he could actually punch and move at the same time, move his hands and feet together. I think Jojo Diaz would have beat Gary Russell Jr. Like the Pedraza has excellent hands and feet, and also can crack a little bit. Um, you, you know, Loma was was if there's a huge size advantage for Loma over Gary Russell Jr. Uh, um, and that was like you know I don't know. It, I I I, I ended, for me I give deference to a bigger dude who can also fight right um, to a little dude who is if if you're gonna be two, three weight classes down, you can be as skilled as you want to be, especially if you're not even a puncher. If you don't even have, like, dynamite in your gloves like that and you got to outpoint the guy. But yeah, that's what I'm... That, 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 he doesn't throw that many punches. If, if, if I may, I want to I wanna actually... Uh, uh, like, that, I was trying to chime in, but I didn't want to cut him off. But I actually agree with Smoke because here's the thing what makes it intriguing. The, you know what I'm saying? Like, like Pedraza, like he said, you know what I mean? Like, you, you're talking about he got knocked out uh, or, or he lost against uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, fucking um, uh, Javante, right? Yeah. And, and so and, and so and so. Besides that, though, do you think that Gary Russell has shown and proven power like that? Uh, you know what I'm saying? And to move up and to take on a Pedraza, I mean, that's pretty intriguing. I, I, I'm not gonna say you know. I, I would I would say that, that that's a good fight. I, I would think that that's a good fight actually. 
I don't. I mean, it's a good fight. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna doubt that Haney and Pajaz is a good fight. It's a good fight. All I, all I'm saying, I'd rather see Gary Russell Jr. versus uh, uh, um Haney. I'd yeah, see fast, that fight. Fast, fast track management. I get that. <laughs> I'd rather see one. that. I'd rather see that fight. I mean, uh, again. And another thing, are they gonna make it? That's the question. I think. Well, I think. Are I, they gonna sign the contract and make the fight happen? That's want, the that's the major question here. I don't want to. I don't want to discredit um Devin Haney, but I think it's too much of a credit. Like, like almost if oh he's just gonna beat Gary Russell Jr. Like I haven't even seen him beat a southpaw yet. I'm gonna come up with these conclusions. Yeah, yeah. cause cause he did well versus Santiago. Cause he did well versus who. Who in the level right. of Gary so, Russell Jr.'s um, skills has he fought? The level of his skills. Let, 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 let's see Gary Glenn, Russell Jr. Me... beat Santiago, uh -oh. and then I can say, then I can get behind the fight. No, but, but I think Santiago need... might beat Gary Russell Jr. Okay, see now you you nah, have no, nah, 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 see smoke. See nah, that's nah, you see nah. Now I know where you had in that smoke. Now I know you had in that smoke. You have no respect for Gary Russell Jr. Just no, you have so no respect for Santiago. Santiago. You have no respect Santiago's for Santiago. Right. Santiago. Santiago's Santiago's a... A... Santiago's not. Santiago's trash, bro. What are you talking he's about? A, he's a tough, no, no, he's a tough trash, bro. long guy. He's a oh, tough, long guy that knows how to fight tall. Like, let Gary Russell win. Jr. is cool. I'm not hating on, like, Gary Russell. I, I like Gary Russell Jr., but his his speed has slowed down. He is, he, he, he doesn't have a high output. Um, You're talking about a guy who is who is basically going to try to outdance you moving up a couple of weight classes. Santiago can, can crack a little bit. Yo, let Johnny Boy jump in, yo. He's been trying to jump in for a minute. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, oh, thank, thank you, Glenn Hermano. So I appreciate you. No problem. Uh, no, I was just going to say, um, man, I'm going to tell you one thing right now, bro. <laughs> I'm going to tell you one thing. My bad. I was typing a couple of emails for a few minutes. Go ahead, Let go me ahead. see that Ryan Garcia, Luke Campbell fight. I guarantee you Luke Campbell knocks him the fuck out. I guarantee it, dog. I guarantee fucking tee it, dog. I think I think when it comes to that fight, for me that's a 50-50 fight. And I do believe that Luke, I won't be surprised whatsoever if Luke Campbell beats him. I think it's more of the sport of boxing. Do we want to see Luke Campbell beat Ryan Garcia? We want Ryan Garcia to beat him. So so we keep that type of that Devin Haney, Ryan Garcia, Ryan Garcia, Javante Tank Davis, um, you know, momentum alive. What's the I date think, of that fight? What's the date of that fight? They ain't said it yet. They haven't said it yet. Okay, yo, Johnny Boy, I will, I will make a wager with you on air. All right. All right. We, we will I, donate. Hey, my pockets to, ain't too. My pockets We will ain't donate too long, to Punch's bro. channel. We will donate to Punch's channel a fifty dollars okay. super chat. If okay. Ryan, on my 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 end that Ryan Garcia wins, okay, you don't have to say by knockout on Luke Campbell. That just okay. Luke Campbell wins, right? Just All to right. be fair, right? There's not going to be a spread here. There's not going to be a spread. You yeah, know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, like, no, 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 no. Whoever gotcha. wins, period, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got now, you, bro. If it's something controversial, where, where, where it's controversial, I, I, I'll give you the edge there. I'm not going to say, hey, you know, man, throw those $50. You know what I'm saying? But if it's something controversial, like, you know, uh, Adele Bird or somebody reffing it and giving it to 120 to 108, you know what I'm saying, when, when, when it was clearly uh, the opposite way, you know what I mean? That, then I'll be like, okay, you know what? All right. Well, how about how about this? How about this? Just so Johnny can wet his beak a little. If you lose, you give me the fifty dollars super chat. If I lose, I'll give. It <laughs> All right. So you want to give it to me? All right. So yeah, I, that, I that's, no that's no problem. That's no problem. I'll, I'll yeah, spread it. I'll, I'll spread it out. Over, I'll spread it out over, uh, over a, a span of a week on Punch's channel. Anyway, it's okay. So, uh, let, 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 me, let me ask this. Let me ask this question. Let me ask this question. Because I want to tap into the other the the other side of the I mean the other um title that I have with um with the race issue. Um do you do y'all feel there's a race problem in boxing, not in society, in boxing, or there is an enviness of other cultures looking at other cultures support their own? I, I agree, bro. Well, um, exactly how I feel, bro. Um, I, it's a, it's a, it is, it is a race problem in boxing, without a doubt. It is a race problem, you know. It's a big issue. Bro. Yeah, it, you know, where boxers, boxing doesn't exist outside of the larger society, right? It's actually a microcosm of the larger societies. So, uh, um, you, you know, as far as if 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 you call if you call it a problem, sure. I, I you know, I just look at it more of a 
the the current late landscape right um and yeah and that's and that's just that's not just in boxing that's not just in america that's you know sort of worldwide the way we you know the way that we are still tribal and then the way we still compete with other people with other you know people who are considered the other right yeah i'll say this bro there is but it comes from it comes from everybody a little bit from everybody just like the, like i say <laughs> There's dickhead Italians out there. There's nice Italians. There's dickhead Puerto Ricans. There's nice Puerto Ricans. There's dickhead black guys. There's cool black guys, bro. It don't matter. None of that. You know what I'm saying? It's, it, it, you know, it comes from everywhere. I've heard it from everywhere before. I've heard it from, you know, and there's nothing wrong with rooting for, you know, your country or whatever, or your city or none of that, but. In the same breath, don't be shitting on everybody else's, or be happy, proud of your culture, or nothing like that. But don't shit on everybody else's. That's all. You know, and that's a good, and that's a good point, Johnny boy. That's a good point. And and let me say this. Let me say this. Boxing has become like in prison. You know how every way's gotta be together. You know, (laughs) and in prison is divided. The whites gotta be with the whites. The blacks gotta be with the blacks. The Hispanic gotta be with the Hispanic. You know what I'm saying? That's that's how boxing is becoming. You know? That's you fools on the coast. We don't have no huh? race politics in the Midwest. Huh? Yeah, <laughs> the, 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 pro- the, the problem, though, I, the, the problem I think that we are sort of ignoring is a system of white supremacy that is pretty, that, you know, has disenfranchised, that's kind of fucked everybody, including white people, right? So, they, so right, they, they, there is this the actual realities of the world that we live in today. So it's while you can say, yeah, like people are, you, you know, people may be, you know, ethnically, or culturally insensitive, right? Or, or you can denigrate somebody else. It's not like Puerto Rican supremacy is like down to you, you know is the is the reason why a whole bunch of people are disenfranchised. So is this is this not the same thing when you talk about these different these tribal differences? Okay, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll say this from my lens because I feel like is 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 if if you say. If you say what I'm about to say, you could be listed as coon, you could be listed as whatever, but since I have the heart punch drunk to say it, then I'll say it. Like I opposed the question. I said, is it racism in boxing? I actually don't believe there's a problem of racism in boxing. There's always going to be racism, but if it, is it a problem? I don't believe it's a problem. Yeah, I do believe, coming from boxers and the ones that complain about racism, I do. I don't think it's a problem with racism. I do think that there's African American boxers and boxing personnel that envy other cultures that support their countrymen, and then use that as is racism. But it's not racism. Is that they support their countrymen? It's not racism that Cotto looks different from Trinidad and Trinidad is is Afro Latino. <laughs> Oh, Puerto Ricans. No, it, 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 let me finish. Let me finish. I got you. And Puerto Ricans is going to support them the same way. Yeah. It doesn't mean, like I said in the beginning, Ricky Hatton is British. AJ is British. When they come to, to America, all them Brits is going to support them. They don't care if AJ is black or white. They care that he's Britain. Same thing with Ricky Hatton. Same thing if, if, if an Irish dude is fighting. Same thing. But when it comes to Oh, this guy is racist. They're not supporting Lumachenko because he's white. They're supporting Lumachenko because he's Ukrainian. Yeah, it's, it kills me. It kills me, punch, because I get a lot of the the Mexican guys saying, "Oh, you don't like Mexicans, Johnny boy. You don't like Canelo, and you don't like Mikey." I'm like, "Well, I like Estrada. I loved Barrera and Morales. I love you know. I come I come from." A town where the majority is Mexican and Puerto Rican, bro. That's where I come from. My all my first cousins are Puerto Rican. I'm the only one. I'm the white boy out of the family, man. Like, like it's it's you know what I'm saying? Like it's it's just dumb shit. You give you give credit to the boxers where it's due, regardless of any of that nonsense. And you I think if there's any if, if it, oh, sorry, sorry, go ahead. There is a there's for me is not a, a race problem. It's right. a co- as a culture problem. See, yeah. because let's say Andy Ruiz, he's Mexican, right? But a bunch of Mexicans didn't come to Madison Square Garden to support him. They came out after he won the title, and then they say he's the first Mexican heavyweight, and then the Mexican fans f- um flocked in. You know, I think it's a culture. Even if you Latin here, is an American culture. 
It's a, I, and, I, and that's what it is. I don't think we have a race problem, but in boxing, there's an American culture, and we envy other cultures in other countries that they know how to support their countrymen. Which so we I, don't. I don't think I don't I don't think that there is an envy of support. I think what it is is people are a little bit annoyed and irritated that we don't get to support our fighters the way that other people get to support theirs, right? Because when we support our fighters, it's because we're racist. No, no, when, no. When no, they no. support their fighters, let me finish. Go, when go, they go, support go. their fighters, is because it's just a cultural thing, right? And that and that's what I'm saying. It's like it's not that Gary Russell Jr. doesn't have support. People would support him. But if I support Gary Russell Jr., I will be accused of supporting Gary Russell Jr. simply because he's black. As if there's, first off, as if there's a problem with that, right? And then secondly, as if that's what I'm doing. No, but see, that's that. that remember, I think we talked about this uh, the, other, the other day in the live show, but I want to um, say it again. It's not that it's wrong for you to support Gary Russell Jr. because he's black. The problem is, is that you want to degrade somebody else because of their culture and then be proud of yours. For example, I don't know about I said I, I said it right, but I'm gonna give you an example of what I mean. Gary Russell Jr. said, oh, this guy, um, he's on, he's only he's overrated because he's white. So it's diminishing that he's good. It's just that he's white, that he's getting the credit. So. How about just saying that I am proud and I support my black fighters, but I don't got to shit on another fighters or the or the lack of or whatever they race. That's the problem. So, but, but the there issue is, is that there is that, that there's a, to but shit there's on somebody else to, to 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 be proud and be and and, and be loyal and and back up your 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 black fighter. I mean, that's fine if there wasn't as such thing as the great white hope in boxing, right? Or the great Latino, like that. I, I get what you're saying. But I, I think that a, a lot of other fan bases get to get away with shitting on other tribes that aren't theirs that black people don't, right? So it's not like uh, all of a sudden it's only one fan base that is supporting their fighter and but shitting on other on fighters. I think that happens across the board, right? And but for some reason there's comes there, there's an issue when it comes to when black fighters do the same do whatever the hell it is. Right. It's, it they, seems like this is what you guys are doing. That is somehow different than what everybody else is doing. But I don't oh, think it is any different. Uh, OK, but, no, but what me... I'm saying. But what I'm saying, Smoke, that I don't believe there is a problem. I believe there's a problem when in the same conversation, if they have those same conversation, all the platforms or whatever, is that they'll shit and saying, oh, this guy just Mexican, Mexican, Mexican. And then I got to and, and then. Or or this fighter is Latino. This fighter is, is 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 whatever is white, and then talk about that we need to back our fighters. It's shitting on somebody else, and then give and and, and then talk about your culture. What I'm saying is, you could you could support other culture and still support your own culture without deading and, and, and discrediting and devaluing other cultures or why they get um what they get or the or the praise Fact. that they get. Fact. Well, and, and that, and yeah, yeah, everyone can do it, but everyone does okay. this. But this is—that's what happens. That's what happens across the board. And I and I am, I, and that—that that is, I think that comes from the um, you know, the amount of cultural, co the amount of contact you have with other cultures, right? Um, but yeah, I, I don't see some some like any sort of ethnic based group support group as being the uh, the poster child for the way that you should be. When it comes to supporting your own, like Let I think that all of them, I think that all of them are, you know, are equally good and equally bad and, the, in and, the way that they do, well, the, the way they express this kind of support. Let me ask you a question: Did did when Manny Pacquiao got got um beaten and everybody was, everybody was saying they got robbed by Timothy Bradley? That Timothy Bradley they robbed him. Did anybody say, "Oh, Manny Pacquiao got robbed because Timothy Timothy Bradley is a black fighter"? Did you ever hear that? Well, I, but no one said that anyone got robbed. Would, would people say that he got robbed, that he was overrated or overhyped because he was a black fighter? Because I think that's a little bit closer to what we're talking about. But I, but even still, even if you had people who said that, what does that prove? I, I, I have to bring this up real quick because this is an example of the shit I'm talking about. Floyd, his bitch ass, disrespected every other fucking race on the planet. Besides black dudes, and nobody makes a fucking nobody. Everybody see. Everybody likes to remember. People have short memories, man. Let me tell you something, dog. If fucking Floyd, Floyd. I remember when Fernando. I remember way back when Fernando and Oscar was about to fight. And he said, "Man, 
Floyd said, man, I can't tell the difference between one Mexican and another. Nobody bats an eye. But then when somebody else does it, it's a problem. It's, here's the problem. You can't say this group of people is okay with saying something and then say, no, but y'all can't say it. It's either okay for everybody to say or nobody to say, dog. It's that simple, bro. It's that simple. Yeah, that would be simple. That it would be that way if everybody had the same starting point. If we weren't dealing with a a supremacist system that disenfranchised other people, then sure. Then we can just say we're all in the same starting field and we're all said, but we don't have that. So because we, we don't have that, I, here, here, here's the other thing. Let me let me just finish. Because we don't we have that, press. we can't expect that every that there's all of a sudden going to be some line that we all tow, right? Because we all have different experiences, and we're going to come and we're going to come together to work past our past thing. But you can't just um, you can't just um, act like it didn't happen in the first place. And that, not only that, but let me just and I'll just finish that, this off with okay. what Floyd does is not what the group does. Like you let you have to let individuals I'm be deplorable that, indi no. you have to you have to I know you have to let individuals be individuals and uh, call out the individual behavior. But when you start to attribute an individual's behavior to the entire group, that's the yeah. issue, right? Because right. when you get the and it's anyway, go ahead. Sorry, well, 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 when you bring when you bring white suprem when you bring the white supremacy analogy, then if these boxers are saying something, then talk about another white supremacy or boxer or things of that nature. Does Lumachenko has anything to do with white supremacy? Does Floyd Mayweather talking about Oscar De La Hoya or or or, or, or Fernando or Fernando Vargas has to do anything with white supremacy? This is just not only saying something racial or or or, or within the lines of those because of white supremacy is that there's a culture that feels like because the history of it because they've been oppressed, that means there's a green light that they could say whatever they want to say because everybody understands about the struggle. And no, it doesn't. A Jew guy can't be racist to me because, or whatever, well, why well, struggle in the Holocaust or blah, blah, blah. No, sorry, no. That's history, I understand it. But you have no green light to be tell me about the history or tell me how much you struggle or I struggle or whatever because I believe everybody around the world struggle, has oppressed and oppressor and things of that nature. But I wanted to stick to boxing. Is it a problem in boxing? Not a problem in society, because for me, boxing has its own society. Is it a problem? Is racism a problem in boxing? No. Right, and, and also, Pugs. And, and, and also, Pugs. Pugs. There's a double standard going on in boxing. You know what I'm saying, bro? The double standard is real in boxing. Like, I remember years ago, uh, fucking Flame Mayweather said a Pacquiao should go eat sushi. When Pacquiao's not even Japanese. You know what I'm saying? And I remember Donald White calling him out for that. He said, um, Pacquiao's Philippines, you know what I'm saying? He's, he's not Japan, you know? No, let me hey, but think that. about it. It would have been, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. It would have been somebody this, else that said, oh, he should Guido, go eat watermelon. That shit would have been going crazy in the news. You know what I'm saying, bro? Gu yeah, Guido. That would have been all crazy in the Guido, news. It would have been somebody Guido, say, I think you should go eat watermelons, you know? Let me, and fried chicken, go, you know what I'm saying? Let me go, let me go, let me say this one thing, bro. I think what Smoke is trying to get at is... That just because Floyd Mayweather said that, don't generalize and say, you know, all black dudes said that. You know, that ain't the case. I think that's what he's trying to say. You, you like he's like Smoke was saying. You talk, you judge each person on its on on, on, on their own accounts. You don't generalize and say, oh, this fucking Chinese dude said some shit to me, so all Chinese people say. You don't generalize like that. You know what I mean? But 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 I I, I think when we wait do, wait 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 well, when Cole and Paul David Jackson I, a N word, right? Does that does that mean that all the white fans don't know what the hell they do and they all play the race card? No. And, and and not only that, like I said, there's a demographics to business in America, right? Uh, women buy different things, but different age groups buy different things, different ethnic groups buy different things. We're so the boxing, idea that, that, I, that no, I'm, I'm saying boxing is a but boxing is the purest form of capital, the purest capitalism th tool. Uh, tool of capitalism that we have in sport, right? It's just capitalism in its purest form, boxing. You try to appeal to a demographic and sell them a product, and that's it. There's no middleman. There's just you and your appeal to somebody else's pocket, right? I, that, I, I, that, that's, that's how boxing works. So the, the idea that, you know, in, at least in America, which is to the most lucrative exponentially by far, if you to combine every other boxing market uh, together, America is still exponentially larger than more lucrative than all of those markets combined, right? 
Um, it, I, I think that the the white market or whatever you call it, like well, however you want to put it, the European descent uh, market in America is a largely untapped one for boxing right now. So the idea that a, a promoter could have a guy like, I, if, for me, if, 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 if a guy said Caleb Plant is overrated because he's white, I would be thinking about because the promoters are talking about making money, not because there's a white supremacist structure necessarily. Like, I'm not going to go play racism like there's a disenfranchisement going on. I'm saying that there is an actual market force to this. And I, I, I'm... What I what I would say to that, right? I agree with that. That that's my, my whole thing is is this that um you you and a lot of people call Bob Arum uh, racist, but the dude is a promoter. You know what I'm saying? He promoted. You know what I'm saying? A lot of famous black uh, fighters. He promotes uh, a lot of uh, uh you know fighters from across the world. You know what I mean? You could call him a racist if you want. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I'm not even gonna get mad about that. You know what I mean? Based on whatever view you have. But you also have Oscar De La Hoya promoting a lot of uh, Mexicans and Latinos, and he tries to promote whoever he could get in under his belt. So if you got uh, somebody like Al Heyman not really promoting, you know what I'm saying, like, like you know, and building these fights, and then everybody gets, uh, you know, uh, lost, you know, uh, you know, after years of, of, of not being relevant, you know what I'm saying, it's really, it really has to do with the promotional company, you know, like, like for what we started off with. So... You know, at the end of the day, you're not being promoted, but but you know, but but the reason that you got into the whole thing was, hey, listen, man, this we're under a uh, uh, you know black American umbrella right here. We're gonna do this for the black fighters. But then you know, what I'm saying you got hustled. You know, what I'm saying like a Don King hustled you, and then all of a sudden you have no 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 fights. You're not relevant. You know, you're not making any money. That that's really a problem of the promotional company that 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 you signed up with. So maybe you should you know kind of assess that and go back to the drawing board and figure out who you want to work with, you know, but, but, um, you know, people have opportunities, uh, uh to make money. It's just that, that they, they either sign up with the wrong promotion of company or they duck it. They yeah. ill-advised. I, but, but, uh, but even throw aside the, the promotional aspect of things, because I'm not, I think, I, I think we're going away. What I really, what I, what my question really was, I think we keep going a little bit away from it. Um, the culture, the culture, and we got to generalize certain things because, of course, we may believe, I might believe what I want to believe, Smoke and Glenn, Guido, whoever's on the panel, we might believe whatever we want to believe. But we, we also got to look at things and, and generalize and what we see in the sport of boxing, who we see that's always saying, bringing race to the equation of saying they're being um, shortchanged because of race, because that's that's how. The conversation when Floyd Mayweather say something about it, when Deontay Wilder say something about it, when when um Gary Russell Jr. is saying something about it, when Channels are saying something about it, and we've hear we hear this a lot in the sport of boxing. We hear that there is one culture, one race that's frustrated about that there is racism or another person is getting more of uh, of their praises because of race. That's that we have to look at that as a general in, in general in boxing. What I'm saying is. I believe there is no prob there is no racism problem in the sport of boxing that I believe that there's enviness of other uh, of the of the same culture that's complaining that they see other culture um supporting and being loyal to their countrymen. I believe that I believe that that's the problem is enviness of seeing other cultures support and and, and support and, and be loyal to their countrymen. The no, I, I think for, for me I yeah, for me, I think that these that it is about being respected and having the same opportunity. And like all of these statements, like if you lump them together into one huge thing, into one gigantic statement, what I from what I hear is um, equality, like economic and economic empowerment and opportunity. Right. So when they want, you, you know, they, they want a, a fighter to be able to. Uh, you know, and I think Terrence Crawford is, you know, kind of a recipient of this, right? They want for a guy to have a weak ass resume like Triple G, yet still be compared to one of the great, all the greats who had ever done it, right? Or they want a guy to be compared to like Muhammad Ali with two fights, right? They want all that kind of stuff, like, and and I'm not sure if if the way that other, everyone's hearing the same thing. Right. When Wilder was talking about, you know, slave wages, he was talking about not taking twelve and a half million dollars for one of the most lucrative fights in boxing. Okay. Right. But but the way he says it or, or, you know, there's another part. He said that I would be more popular in England if I was if I uh, 
being the way that I speak, if I was a light, if I was a lighter complected, I would be, uh, I would be more accepted. Right. Um, the, you know, I, I don't know about, for me, that seems to be all about, um, yeah, access and having a level playing field. It doesn't, I don't know that it has some, anything to do with the, the fan, the overall, um, individual fighters or even a group of fighters are envious of another fan base of support. I think it's more about they don't want to get screwed on the back end and they want to have the same opportunities. So, they want uh, to be the re- best. They, 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 want to have, they want to be able to fight mediocre competition and be compared to the all-time greats as well. So, so to respond to what you asked, uh, Punch, just to, just to uh, kind of streamline this, right? So uh, you're talking about different cultures and things like that. Okay, so um, when it comes to the um, you know, economic empowerment and the opportunity, like you were saying, Smoke, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, okay, so, uh, so, 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 I mean, that, 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 that basically has been a, a civil rights issue for the longest. But what we're trying to say, or I'm trying to say at least, I'm not going to put nobody's, you know, no words in nobody else's mouth. But uh, so, for example, uh, top rank, the zone, they're promoting these UK fighters and these people across the world because they do have countries behind them. And you have uh, uh, all these high amounts of people that are willing to support, just like uh, Golden Boy with Mexico. You know what I'm saying? And so when it comes down to it, you know, if you're if you're going to promote and you're trying to make that money for, for, for your boxers, you know what I'm saying? Then you have to do a better job of promoting. That, that's why I brought the promotion in the first place. You see what I'm saying? Like, so, so you have to do a better job of, of really bringing it out and making sure that you have the same advantage when it comes to opportunity and, uh, uh, you know, a, a economic empowerment. You see what I'm saying? You, as the promoter, that's their job to do that. And that's why I brought the promoters up in the first place. Yeah, and, and you know, just to piggyback. I agree with you. And even if you take if you take it boxing mo- most recently, there've been a glut. I mean, there's everywhere you see for the last like you know, call it forty years. There's black excellence all throughout that whole thing. So people may be tired of it, right? So in order to break through, like a, a you know, a black fighter, may, in order to break through the noise of a Pernell Whitaker or a Mike Tyson or a Floyd Mayweather, may have to do something different than uh, have a different path to you know capturing the public's imagination than the Lomachenko whose fan base, you know, that demographic has been starved, you know, forever, you know, the right. same thing. So okay, it's I, not, it, for me, it's not, it's not necessarily about this, um, this idea uh, about um, racism, the way we experience racism in the larger society. It's more about um, the, the way that these different communities have interacted with the sport in history. The way it is now, the way it has been recently, like what the demographics are, where the money is, it's, it's, it's not just a, it's not just, you know, white people. It, it, yeah, whatever. It, it's not, it's not the same, it's not the same kind of racial conflict that you get in the larger society. And, 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 and right there, that's what I'm saying. It's that in reality, this is not about really race because I'm saying the culture, because I feel like the same non-support or whatever they want to call it goes with Andy Ruiz. That's why I mentioned Andy Ruiz. He wasn't the Mexican golden child fighting Anthony Joshua. That was in New York City. The Brits was out there in New York City. Nobody believed. The, the, the Mexican fan base didn't crawl all over Madison Square Garden and say Andy Ruiz is going to be our next champion. Kalen Plan is white. He's not getting that type of, um, oh my God, this is the next per- Nah, I think it's a culture in America. It's not. Bro, that's what I'm saying. You know, that's what I'm bro. saying. Do you remember? Do you remember the Ricky Hatton Floyd Mayweather fight? Do you remember what that sounded like? Yeah, it was nothing but Brits in there. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. And, 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 you know what I mean? Yeah, look, look. yeah that's, that's 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 why I give the analogy of when when it was Andy Ruiz and AJ came to Madison Square Garden. It was the Brits in 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 Madison Square Garden that came and flew in for AJ, and AJ is black. Ricky Hatton is white, so it was about the Brits. It was about the the culture of the Brits that they support their own, no matter where they gonna fight. We are gonna go out there now. Let's say Earl Spence went to Sheffield and fought on uh, uh, versus Kell Brook. Why didn't the Americans go out there in Sheffield and do the same thing they do? Um, we um they do oh. over here. Why we didn't go over there? Why was oh, it because that's not how we that's not how we consume boxing. That's how they consume boxing. We don't consume boxing by going to the fight. We consume boxing by watching it on our ass. The same way we consume all sports, right? It's a different. It's a like so. The UK, you can travel. You can drive to the farthest stadium in the UK and be home in the same day. You can't do that. If I if I leave Oakland to go to Madison Square Garden and try to drive back to Oakland, it's gonna take me like a little less than two weeks. 
like, that's not how we rock it over and, here. It's not the and, same thing. And, and, and not only that, like boxing doesn't even ex- it doesn't exist in the same place in the in the in the pantheon of entertainment. Forget so, sport. So forget is sport. It, like just just entertainment in general. We go so, to movies more than we w- watch boxing. So is it fair? So is it fair? Because I said this, I tweeted with with, with Lella Ellaby, and we was going back and forth. Um, uh, a month ago, and I said the best thing to do if you want to see um people um, an American because they were talking about black fighters and stuff like that, and I'm I'm saying is it wasn't about black. I think it was an American culture. If we have our fighters actually be groomed in their hometown, re- not having them fight in Vegas, not having them fight in another state. If we have um Ugas versus Sean Porter, which they fought in in, in Cali, that fight. Had like 83 people there. But I assure you, if Sean Porter would have gone to his hometown in Ohio and fought Ugas, people would show up. Is a reason why Javante Tang Davis show um his fans showed up in Atlanta or when he goes to Baltimore because his base fans are from those type of places. If you have um um the Meaches Andre when he fought in um Providence, had a great turnout. Usyk in Chicago, that Ukrainian fan base has a great turnout. I think that there is support, but promoters don't know how to. Look, look uh, um, Bud Crawford when he fight in Nebraska, beautiful, b- beautiful turnout. I think so. People, it seems like there's support or whatever. There is support, but fight in their hometown until they get that type of, you know what? Now you're a Vegas fighter. I don't if believe I that may, every fight should be in Vegas. If I may yeah, drive this um, point, because I know Intangible wants to jump in. Uh, I know he just came on the panel and, and I apologize. I do want to drive one more point home because I think uh, Smoke, you just kind of like uh, answer your question and you made the point right there. So more people go to the movies than watch boxing. You see, when it comes to a cultural thing across the world, people are willing to travel overseas because it's a cultural thing, right? And over here, right, it's not really a cultural thing. So when you talk about, you know, um, who's, um, you know, uh, as far as like Lomachenko, oh, okay, well, uh, you know, he's only famous because he's white. You know what I'm saying? He's overrated because he's white. You know what I'm saying? Not famous, but overrated, you know, to use uh, Gary Russell Jr.'s uh, words properly. But uh, when you when you talk about uh, Mexico, they, they're promoting those Mexico Mexican fighters. So over there, they're getting a, a bunch of pay-per-views. You know what I'm saying? With the Mexican-Americans, they're getting a bunch of pay-per-views. Same thing with Filipinos. Same things with, with, with people from from uh, from the UK. Same thing with people, you know, from, from all across the world. You know, but over here, unfortunately, uh, our promoters want to keep it in-house. They don't want to travel the world. You know what I'm saying? They, they want to keep it in-house. And they don't do a great job of promoting. They want to extend things and do it the Floyd Mayweather way, you know what I'm saying, to try to marinate fights so they're over-marinated. And, and, and you know, you know, it just doesn't work. It's not the same blueprint. Floyd Mayweather did it, and, and that's about it. You know, shout-outs to him. Kudos to him. He did it. But, you know, everybody shouldn't be trying to follow that blueprint. Go ahead, Tangible. Go ahead, my brother. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, so my view on this basically is that, well, I don't think there is racism and really much systemic mistreatment in the infrastructure of boxing. I think there is racialism. I mean, for example, if you take a person of a certain race, they may have a sort of race slash character amalgamation that is typical or atypical amongst how the race is portrayed, and they can use that as a a means to promote them. If they are atypical, they can use them as somebody who can relate to their people. Or if they're not, they can use them as somebody who's more identifiable to others. I think that definitely exists. And there is racial sort of bias in promotion. I don't think it's necessarily racism. It's certainly not comparable to past days, in my opinion. I think I, I, I say this. I think we begin having the culture of boxers claiming their country, saying that I'm an American fighter. I'm American because when it co- when it, when they go to Olymp- when the Olympics, we don't care if you're black, white, Latino, Asian American. We care that you're just American and we support our Olympic team as American. When these fighters start act, start start. Talking like that, we're in America. We are American. I'm an American fighter. I'm here for America. I'm here to support America. Instead of just saying I'm here to support a Latin, the Latino, I'm here to support Black people, because that language right there is just okay. You're just supporting your own. Okay, I mean, I don't. I mean, you don't want me to support you because you're just saying Black. I'm an American. I'm here for. I'm an American fighter. Come support me. 
Come support your countrymen. Promote yourself as an American fighter instead of just promoting yourself as anything else. And so, I think so I, I feel like that's what Floyd did. Floyd attempted to promote himself as an American fighter, but the American boxing public wouldn't allow that to happen. Right. I, 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 at no point was Floyd talking about I'm putting on for the black people. Floyd no, but was like, let's take Floyd out of this because Floyd is, 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 but, a, no, but, is but if I, if I could just say something, like somebody Leonard. else brought Floyd in it when it came to marination, right? So like Bob Arum, right, who's still in the sport, he came into the sport rumble in the jungle, right? Ali brought him in as an attorney. But Bob Arum's one of his first words was, let's marinate this fight. Let's make it later. Let's, let's keep it. Let's kick it back and make it bigger. Right. So they, they, I, they, I think that there is um, I think that this idea that, um, is out there that um, that we can get past, um, you know, our stereotypes that I, I don't I just don't think the boxing world is embracing or even cognizant of or even values, really. Actually, I think that I think that the think biggest America, stereotype America. I think America uh, my bad. Uh, I think that the uh, uh, biggest stereotype is is that um, that in this country. Right. Um, we are we are pretty much second, and I hear it all the time. If you ask the casual person, we are second to UFC because boxing is losing. Boxing is is, is you know is is about to be out the window, and that's the culture. You see, going back to the culture, that's the culture here. Whereas the overseas, that's not the case. Yeah, it's, I'm gonna give you I'm, I'm gonna give you an example. I'm gonna give you an example, and this is just me. And I'm, I'm and y'all y'all could be like I'm I'm crazy, whatever. Jorge Masvidal, right? He's Cuban. I just knew that he was Cuban a couple of months ago. But in reality, I didn't care before what he was. I didn't, I, to be honest, y'all, I don't even know what's Nate Diaz. I know he got a Spanish name, but I don't know where's, who's his mom, his, his father. Is he, is he Puerto Rican? Is he, Latin, is he, is he Mexican? Is he Nicaragua? I don't care. You know, it never comes into my mind to be like, oh, Oh, Nate Diaz, okay, now I like him because he's Latin, baby. Now I'm going to support him. Nah, I just look at look, him as fighters. Well, look, the, the thing is, though, like, it's a, di it's a big difference between America and all these other nations because America, let's be honest, it's much more multicultural than most other nations throughout the world. And it's so widespread and so populated yeah. that a lot of the time people need to find a sort of exclusive group that they can sort of identify themselves by and brag themselves on because there's so many people you want to get that sort of one up on everybody it is yeah. what it is but i gotta leave i mean you could use it for promotional i can see that you could use it for promotional but, I, but what i mean is we could use race as for for prom, for promotional use you know but it's not to dead not to dead a race or to criticize another race because your race is not on the up and up you know, th that's what I mean. Like, you could be proud, but you don't have, you could be proud of your race and you could support your own, but you don't have to be like, well, this person is shitty and these guys are racist amongst us. And yeah, so I support Latino, I support black. That's the way, that, that, that's the way it seems it is it, 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 spoken in, in boxing, you know, and that's what, and that's why I feel I, I wish that ish eliminates. And also, some yes, there is a green light in boxing where you can say a lot of stuff. It's not P. It's not PR. We see Bernard uh, Bernard Hopkins that we had what, what he did to um what was it uh, Oscar De La Hoya or who was it for the um, Trinidad with the flag the Trinidad and then he had a run out the of flag Puerto Rico. yeah yeah yeah, yeah and he had a run out of Puerto Rico like yeah it's they're gonna cool. kill that nigga yo they're gonna kill him bro yeah Damn. you could prom you, you could promote a fight but also know the seriousness of 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 of, of, of when you playing that race card. And that's why when people be like, yo, you was going in on like Devin Haney, I also said, remember what happened with with, 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 with Minter versus um Marvin Hagler. You could talk all that, all that, all that race stuff, and it, you you may think it's, it does no harm, but it's a fine line. It could be very, very dangerous right quick. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like people feel like because of the hood they grow up in, they can just drop in bombs with impunity. And you can you can run up against the wrong guy who's not playing that with you. Just straight and, up, and exactly, and it could go the other way. Just because you think that, and just because a, 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 a let's say an African American have gone through the oppression and have gone through history, and 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 we already know what what this country is built on, just still doesn't mean that you have the green light to be racist on a uh, Mexican, Mexican on Spanish, Asians, and stuff like that. So that's the fine line too, you know.
And yeah, that's I, what I'm it saying. Is. I'm saying like if you could you could be wherever in your hood, you can be like spick, wet back, this, that, that and the third. And then you come up against some dude and, you, you know, you come up missing. Like not everybody is is not everybody's tolerant. Not everybody's trying to listen to your story, or or, or feel like they need to be disrespected by strangers. Yeah, yo, yo, my people, I gotta take care of some family um things right now. <laughs> so, but tomorrow, y'all really want to finish this conversation, man. Thank you, thank you for tuning in, yo, bro. Before you leave, brother, before you leave, what you thought about Virgo's performance? Virgo T's performance. Great. I mean, I think it was a great. It was I don't great, understand, I, and I don't understand why he's getting a lot of criticism. I don't understand that, man. Just like I said, I before, can't believe that. It's just like I said before. Fighters, there's fans that they're getting used to a person knocking everybody out, and then they, they then they want to question: Could this guy is ready for a twelve round bout? Can he go a whole twelve round? How could he? How could he make adjustments? And then when he gets tested a little bit, then it's almost like ah, oh, you see, oh, he's not that. No, he's not ready. And that's the problem with the sport mm -hmm. of boxing is that we hype it too much. We, 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 they knock out everybody else, and then we want them to go through some type of task to prove to us that they're a 12 round fighter. And then they go almost, uh, it was a 10 round bout, right? Or a 12 round bout. But well, 12 rounds, 12 rounds. Yeah. So then he goes long, he goes all the way to the ninth, what, eighth, seventh, what? Seven, seven, seven rounds. Seven, and, seven. Oh, but Earl Spence knocked him down earlier, and Daniel Swift Garcia then, and then it's it yeah, they the best. They're the best ever since Salice Bread. Yeah, that's how I get pissed off with these fans. You know what I'm saying, bro? Yeah, yeah. If I could just jump on before we jump out, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought Virgil Ortiz's performance was great, but it's in the aftermath of that performance. I've I've heard a lot like Virgil Ortiz should fight Crawford or Spence or all this stuff, and I think maybe that's where it comes from because I yeah, I yeah. like I want the best for Virgil. I just don't think he's ready. Like I want, I'd like to see him fight somebody who can actually hurt him, right? So I think that Vargas had some, he had some real nice moments that if he could actually, if he had more pop in his gloves, it'd be a different fight. So I'd, I'd like to yeah. see the guy step up before he start claiming he's like the new king, right? Yeah, and, yeah. And my, my, my final thing is, thank you for having me on the panel. Thank you to you brothers. Uh, but when it comes down to it, my last thing is that uh, they're trying to hype up, um, uh, what's, what's his name from the zone? Um, was having an argument with um, with Sergio Mora. Uh, oh today. yeah, yeah, uh, yeah! I saw that. Yeah, and, and and he's trying to like say Thomas Delorme. I'm sorry, I'm Puerto Rican, bro, but Thomas Delorme is not a step up, bro. Like, like you know what I mean? Like, I'm sorry to say, Thomas <laughs> Delorme is is one dimensional, and you know, just because he had a good outing against the last opponent, don't don't put him up against Virgil Ortiz. That that's so to me that that's wasted money if they try to put me to buy that. I say this: if young fighters don't want that pressure, then I suggest Devin Haney. Keep your mouth closed. Be twenty-one years old. Go through. Go. Go. Um. Fight. Fight. Um. Go and grow. The same thing goes for Ryan Garcia. The same thing goes for Virgil T. The same thing that goes for Edgar. The same thing. If we want. If we want. If y'all want. If y'all don't want to be. You know. what I'm saying. Criticize or, or push to make the, the, those type of fights that you might not be ready. Stop talking like you could be an elite and like, like you a pound for pound fighter. Like everyone is ducking you. Shut up. Go through, go through what all the other, other legends have gone through and there won't be no criticism. There won't be no rush. I don't believe like these fighters could, should be rushed. I don't believe that Devin Haney should be rushing. People be calling him a ducker. He's 21 years old. Same thing goes for Ryan Garcia. Same thing goes. But if they talk that type of game, Fans are gonna gonna pressure them. Oh, really? You that? Everybody's ducking you. Okay, let's see you fight this person. Let's see you fight this person. And now, now we mm -hmm. own these young dudes. In reality, we're not supposed to be on these young dudes. They have not even developed as being a grown man yet. Yeah. Word. Right, well, peace to you though, man. Yo, have a great night, bro. Yeah, peace and peace to the yeah, 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 Peace to you guys, man. Peace to Punch. Peace to the panel. Glenn, salute to all. Everybody else. Salute. Next salute. Time, smoke. Yo, no peace. Salute, God salute. bless y'all. Easy. Ah. Uh,